Hey, okay. Now, uh, I'm just going to start over because I have no idea what you got or what you didn't get. And uh, But we've been, we're working through some, uh, some camera hardware issues. I don't know, the GoPro is supposed to be super sweet. And the GoPros are super cool. But uh, for whatever reason, as you saw, it was locking up. So we got a uh, sweet Avermedia cam. Different shot here where you get to see, uh, well, you get to see us here working on this. And uh, this is the car. 1978 Honda Civic uh, with what I think is a broken timing belt. And we are going to uh, diagnose that. We're going to make sure, according to my idiot's guide to how to keep your Honda Civic alive, we're going to figure out how to, uh, well, we're, we're going to check and make sure that the timing belt is wrong, is broken. And if so, then we are going to go ahead and proceed with a bit of the tearing down of the, uh, the whole top end to get the head off so that we could replace the timing belt and uh, have the head worked on to fix it up. Hey, are you? Oh, this guy. Um, What's your name again? Uh, no, some seriously, seriously not. So that's what it is. There it is. Uh, ser seriously? Seriously. Seriously Nas is here. Been, been doing an amazing job getting this figured out. And we're going through, you know, we're figuring out what the best way to do this is. So thanks for hanging out, if you're still hanging out. Um, this is working on the Honda Civic timing belt. And the first thing that we're going to do here, we've got tools. Nas, is, I said this before, but I'm going to say it again. Nas is a total awesome mechanic. I'm handy. So he is going to uh, be the lead man on this job. The Idiot's Guide says to have a friend when you do this work. And I don't know if that's just like for moral support or what exactly, but we've got, we've got the friend part covered. We've got the tools covered. Uh, so what we're going to do first here, and I was reading this before. I was so rudely interrupted by a GoPro that just would not cooperate. Let me read to you here. Uh, when the timing belt breaks, your engine turns but won't start. Uh, the crankshaft spins yet fails to turn the camshaft. Let's say you're driving along and the engine stalls. And when you try to start the engine, it spins. Things are happening in there. Uh, to find out if the broken timing belt is your problem, and this is what we're going to do next, we are going to remove the distributor cap and turn the ignition key to start. If the crankshaft pulley spins but the distributor rotor doesn't, the camshaft's not turning, you need a new timing belt. So to do this, uh, we need um, we need a, well, where's our distributor cap? Uh, we probably want to take the uh, air cleaner yeah, off first, right? Yep, so we're going to need that little uh, eight millimeter jobber or otherwise known as a needle nose pliers. Um, having done all the work on this car, I do know all these little... Uh, oh, the proper tools. Proper tools, yeah. So <laughs> this is, uh, this is like six millimeter, but uh, so there's... All kinds of little hoses. Right. Be very, very careful. These, these are pretty. We should actually get a new hose for here. There's, oh, there's all kinds of other things to do. With this little, thing. little. I mean, sure. this is grand, just PVC, so it's not a big deal. But. Yep. And there's more that are on the bottom. Yep. There's one there. And there's one that goes to the valve cover. So as we do this, what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be setting all the parts here in a nice little order. Um, that will allow us to easily put them back in the car when we put it back in the car. That's me overanalyzing and basically uh, I'm overorganizing. It's the one thing that gives me confidence when I'm working on cars is that I can put things in just the exact yeah. right order. And so I would like a rag or something to cover the car. Okay. Just we have plentiful rags. Just to be on the safe side. Yep. Look, now nothing can fall down the car. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a distributor cap somewhere. That is... Right there. Yep. There's our distributor cap. So this what we're going to do is we are going to pull the cap off of the distributor cap. Put that aside. And yeah, likely we could probably... I, didn't, I haven't gotten to the point of doing any tune-up stuff on this because the car was running and driving well, nicely. I love, I love your... Uh... Coil wire. That's oh wow, that's, that's okay. interesting. That's interesting. The whole thing wire. covers the coil. Um, so now we have the distributor cap off of the distributor. Now we can turn the key. And now we can turn the key. And what we're looking for, according to the idiot's guide on how to keep your, your Civic alive, 
Uh, if the crankshaft fully spins, but the distributor rotor doesn't, the camshaft's not turning, which means we need a new timing belt. So now here's the exciting part. This is what I'm really good at. I'm good at turning the key. You know, when it comes to, when you have people that are, uh, when, you, when you're fleeting the brakes, yes. I'm the guy that, you're the guy that pumps, pumps the brake. Yeah, yeah, I'm the guy that yeah. pumps the brake. That's... Do, you, do you hold the smart end of the tape measure? Oh, yeah. And the flashlight? I'm really good at that. Holding the flashlight, so you're gonna want to look and see at yes, that, and I'm gonna get to be able to see. All right. Well, we should get. Some idiot. Some idiot. Like me, left the goddamn key on. Oh, the key was left on, so the battery's dead. So ah. okay, give the battery a little boost. Was, so I can... was a bit flustered. I have a battery charger. The old school battery charger because it puts instant juice. Yeah, so now I'll probably kill the battery too. That's excellent. What a great way to start this off, John. So, when the timing belt failed, I was on my way to go get some metal work done to this car, and it was a fairly traumatic uh, time when that happened. And I, so, I forgot to turn the key off. Awesome. So, this is giving you a really good look at just how uh how useless i am on my own john uh can we put is it possible to put chat up on the stream do you have twitch on here yeah you can just bring up twitch on there i'll do, I'll do that all right so we're just gonna put a battery charger on here and uh hopefully that will give us enough juice in a minute or so to actually get the car to turn over very slightly uh, let's just make sure that I'm not doing this wrong. There we go. There is now power to the battery. Let's have Twitch up on the other thing for monitoring. Then we can just be able to see chat, too. And respond. Oh, yeah, In yeah. real time. If you ask questions, I'll ignore you. <laughs> but I'll pay attention. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, there we go. Look at there we the go. part of the show. This is, we're watching TV with you. TV! <laughs> Okay, um, so, I, yeah, what I, let me just bring up, okay, it's on the fourth channel, and I need to go to me over here, on my yeah. channel, there we go, right here. that's the one right there, there we go. look at, now, okay, let's just sit around and watch, let's just watch these guys on TV, they're getting cool, there we go, look, I've got the mechanic's jacket on, but I'm not the mechanic, um, okay, so let's see what happens here. Yeah, as long as it turns over a little bit, we should be able to see. Okay, give it a little bit. Yeah. All right. It's gonna need a moment to charge. I, I it's, been, it's been sitting now for a week with the key on, so the battery's completely flat. So, uh, so just so people in chat are aware, I did bring the PS2, so you are on the hook for a Discord. Have a stream at some point. Mm. I'm down. I sing ABBA like a. We have automatic bleeping functions built into these we cameras. Do. It's really great. But I'm yeah, I'm still a bit pained about the entire uh, inability to do that. So we're gonna now at this point, we you know I could have had the charger on this whole time, but so two two sometimes you have to take a couple steps back to be able to step forward. Right. Um, so here, here's summing up. So what happened? Well, let me just tell you a little story here while the battery is charging up a little bit. So last, it was last week, it might've been more than, it was last week plus ago. This, this car has been running wonderfully since I got it running. And I was going to take it out to my friend, Danny Pasco, who is a really awesome metal fabricator. And he's going to address the very little bit of rust that is on this car by welding in new metal and grinding it flat because that's what he does he's just like he's a master fabricator he's going to fill in so that all the the tiny little rusty spots were totally gone and ready to just be painted over and nice and uh so I had his time had an appointment with him and then backed the car out of the garage some northwest bunny had somebody here 
looking at uh, buying some shelves, and the guy saw this car roll out of the garage, and he's like, oh my god, a Honda Civic, oh my god! I mean, literally, like, totally lost his mind, because this car is so sweet. And it's just idling nice and running perfect, as it does. And I'm like, okay, cool, man, I'm out, I'm, out. I'm going to go. And I pulled out onto the onto the road, and, and it started, a uh, little, little lifter tick came up. And I'd never heard anything like that in this engine before. Um, so I'm like, okay, uh, well, I'm going to pull back in the driveway and take a look at that because, I don't know, maybe it lost its oil somehow. Um, and sometimes, you know, older cars, they just pick up a little tick and then it goes away. So I came in here, checked the oil. Oil's fine. It was down maybe a little bit. It was, and I put a little bit more in just to make sure. Started up again, and, and the tick was kind of worse. God, what's happening? I was traumatized because this car is basically perfect and I was going to you know, just get some metal work done so that we could be uh, even more perfect. And I, so I pulled forward again up to the stoplight and uh, left from the stoplight and boom, like that, it just died. And I had just enough momentum to you do you turn across the highway to live on and I pushed it back here in the driveway and uh, gave up for the day because I was just like, wow, did that just happen? And the fact is, it makes sense. The car has 115,000 miles on it. According to uh, the Idiot's Guide, you're supposed to adjust the timing belt every 30,000 miles. Um, and so, and 90,000 is really pretty much the max on these from everything I've Where read. you would replace where the you timing would, belt. Where you, would, where you would absolutely, at the end of the conversation, that's 90,000 90, miles is where you should be replacing the... Yeah. belt if it's lasted that long and so it it's possible that it could have been done but i don't have any record of that and i don't i don't think uh my friend that i bought it from guys if you're out there um i don't think that they didn't done the timing belt on it and they didn't have any record of the timing belt being done um so it need, needs to be done so that's why my my based on what happened there and based on the mileage that's why i'm i'm kind of assuming that it's the the timing belt. Uh, let's see if that battery is. Let's see, and it's, it's taking a good two amps now, at least. So, should I have a big roller charger? So, oh yeah, I have it, it, it has a two hundred amp boost on it. I have a couple of those kind of things too. Ready? Yep. So. No. Was it or something? Um, I have a little charger pack thing. That, uh, oh, I do too. I can go uh, grab mine too. Okay, if you want, want to try yeah. that. Yep, yeah, let's um, try that first. Be right back. Yep. This is uh, the way some things go, and been focusing so much on getting the stream running that I didn't uh, I didn't realize that. Like I said, I was traumatized when it, when it, when the little Honda was was dead. And I'd taken Danny Pasco's time, and I had to call him to say, Danny, I'm not going to be able to come out. The car died. And then I pushed it in the driveway, and I probably had the key on to make sure that the steering was not going to lock on me. And I left the key on. So uh, those of you that are watching, they're like, oh, man, you are really, you're, you're, you're really not starting out here impressing us with your knowledge of cars. Can't even, doesn't even know if the battery is dead or not. Um, true. True, though. But this is this is how some things go, and we're just gonna keep rolling on and on with it. I had a couple of those things. One, and and uh, the other. I think well, hopefully yours will work better than mine did the other day. Uh, I've got the old school charger on here, which is what should have been on here in the first place. Uh, but the battery was, you know, hopefully I have now killed the battery, which uh, should have possibly died back in 2017. Well, so it's from 2017. Should be uh, should be ready to go. Yep, that's at ninety eight percent. So okay. All seven battery, so it's four years old. So it should be actually pretty good. Oh, depends. Guess what? The distributor rotor did not. The rotor did not turn even a single little bit. So the timing belt, so belt is gone. Verified. Okay. So that there we have achieved some element of success so far on the show. Yes. Woo. Woo. Now 
we are going to disconnect the battery charger because we don't really need a battery to start a car that won't start. Right, and actually now that we know that that now we know the timing belt has failed, which we suspected uh, as 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 being failed. Now we know that. So now, uh, even though now it's probably doesn't need a manual to guide us, I'm going to use the manual as kind of a, an outline for this for this process. And it's always, even if you know what you're doing, it's always good to have a manual saying, "Hey, don't do that before you do this," and so, go on and so forth. So you have the entire you have a book right there, but for anyone that's working on cars. They have the entire world at their fingertips. There's no reason to do things improperly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, although I, I I would be really surprised if there was a replacing the timing belt on your 1978 it's, Honda Civic it's video. It's very hard to find one. I looked for one. I wasn't able to find one. Um, I wasn't able to look, find There one. are not a many of these cars out but there. This, but it's also a... It's this. It's tiny. There's not a lot to it. it yeah. You know... Um, so I imagine the first thing we're going to do here, I'm going to look at the book, but what the first thing we're going to have to do is drain the coolant. Yes, and, and wow, that's interesting. Your whole valve cover is literally those two bolts. Yeah, very little. So let's see what the book says. Uh, timing belt replacement. Condition, broken timing belt. Tools and materials, maintenance tools, 10 millimeter, 12 millimeter, 14 millimeter wrenches, spark plug wrench, engine turning wrench, two large screwdrivers, jack, timing light, and friend okay so um step one remove valve cover and upper belt cover okay uh, and so i mentioned that's what we're talking about the 10 millimeter right yes we need two 10 we need 10 millimeter for these bolts and they'll come off okay and then we can work on upper cover okay so uh one 10 millimeter yes okay i'm, I'm suspecting that Step one should have actually been disconnect the battery ground. Well, probably, yeah, that right? wouldn't hurt. Um, that's, that, is, that tends to be, usually step one is to disconnect the battery ground. So, uh, so bad things don't happen that you don't expect right. to happen. I got, I got in a little argument with my father-in-law last year because he was, uh, I was cooking, putting the battery back in his his uh, four-wheeler, uh -huh. and I hooked up the positive cable first. Which is was, what I would do. And he was like, why would you do that? Now, if you hit something when you're with the other cable, you arc. And I was like, no, sir. And and it's been a while since he's spent a lot of time working on cars, but positive cable comes off first, positive cable goes on first. And so, no, no or, I'm sorry, sorry negative, cable goes, negative cable comes off first. Positive cable, negative cable should come off first. Oh, well, see, I... So so here's the reason. If the negative cable comes off, if you hit something with that wrench, metal with that wrench, yeah, it's never going to arc because you're on the negative side. And here's our other 10 millimeter. You understand what I'm saying? But, if you, but if, you, if you try to pull the, positive, the negative or the positive while the negative is still attached, mm -hmm. then you touch something metal, you're going to arc. So this is... That is a nine millimeter, and it doesn't like either of those. That's no, it's not ten. It's it's too big. For, it wouldn't fit. Eight would was or nine was. Nine is too big. Nine, nine is too too small. Ten is too too big. big. Interesting. It's the it's the yeah, that's the wrong way. It's the it's the 1978. Many different bolts that may have gone on this over time. Exactly. Um, yeah. Which one do you have here? The nine. Yeah, probably. Uh, probably gonna be. We might just go with the needle once again. No. <laughs> it's one of the most. You have like a five sixteenths or. Three ace maybe. I've tried three ace, but I didn't really get a bite on that either. Nope, it's bigger than three ace, so it'd be it half. Might, might be the... adjustable spanner time. It might be. Or I might be able to get that ten to hook. Huh? That little... See, you put a real mechanic behind a wrench, and you can get things to happen that a handy guy cannot. See now. If you disconnect your positive, 
the ethanol. So the positive choice. See, now it's too small. Now it's too big for the. Yeah, but we have the nine right here too. Yeah, let's see if that works. We'll, we're gonna let the the, the mechanic do do the thing. It doesn't. But there's no power. Okay, so Our disconnect the battery now. ground is done. Right. It doesn't say remove the battery. No. Nope. I, was, I was trying to go a step too far. It didn't say remove the battery. Let's take a look at chat. Um, Laos21, what's up? How's it going? Welcome. Bigger boot. Are these non-interference? Great question. Great question. Now, in your, in your research, you you saw definitively I, that I, it is I an interference engine? I saw that it was an interference, but the way your book's reading, um, it doesn't sound like they're talking about being an interference engine. So, we'll, uh... so I guess th this is a question. Uh, this is an engagement opportunity for, yeah, everyone, for, for well, chat. Yes. Uh, if somebody would like to look it up, I personally never looked it up. Nas uh, looked it up a bit, and um, let's see here. Remove the valve cover. Uh, step through one through six of the valve cover. Removal technique, the bolts that hold the upper belt cover. Take a 10 millimeter wrench. The picture shows you what you're looking at. Yep, I see. Um, no, the upper belt cover looks like it's under the valve cover, because that's just two bolts right here. Yep, uh, steps one through six for the valve cover removal technique. Yeah, it's it's showing the uh, the two the two uh, bolts there as being fairly integral into holding on. That's why there's only two bolts holding the valve cover on because that end cap there is helping hold it on too, right? Uh, so it it looks like the valve cover goes over the top of the end cap. Okay. So it doesn't so, look like it's holding it. Huh. But I'm gonna I'm gonna get these two bolts out and double check. It's the the, the idiot's guide, and here I'm I am the idiot here. It doesn't step one does not really say doesn't even say take the two bolts off the top. No, it just says remove so, the valve cover. It says see chapter four valve check and adjustment. Oh, there you go. Go to chapter four. Um, here here we go. We actually this is a real book, chapter four. Let's go back to chapter four. I get so he's this guy that writes this stuff. He doesn't want to re restate his, something that's already been stated properly. Chapter four. Check and adjust valves. Maintenance every fifteen thousand miles. Um, disconnect breather hose at valve cover. Civic yeah. twelve hundreds from seventy five to seventy nine. Remove upper smog pump hose. Yeah. Uh, See here, remove valve cover crown nuts. Done. Um, well, let's read through that. The valve, the Honda valve cover is held on by two small crown nuts. There may also be some wires or hoses wandering no. over the top of valve cover. Do you have a pry bar? I do. One yes. crown nut may hold down a bracket for the clutch and spring plug cables. The others and some air conditioning. Yeah, blah blah blah. At one point, at one point, this crown nut probably had a bracket on it. Yep. Over here, to see the. See the cable? Yep. So there's probably a bracket on that crown nut at one point holding that. Okay. And maybe also holding this. Uh, remove washers and grommets. Done. Uh, take off. Let's see here. The middle washer and grommet are glued together. Uh, if you're in doubts before you touch the start the step, but you remember the mechanic who worked on the car does, did not actually have surgeon's hands, so apply some muscle to pull off the valve cover. Um, Which is why I said, do you have a... A pry bar. A pry bar. Uh, what kind would you like? I have a multitude of pry bars. Um, I have something about a 12-inch pry bar, if you had something about that long. Uh, okay. Like a carpenter's pry bar well, or a crowbar? I, I was thinking more like a mechanic's pry bar, that's why. Ah, uh, oh, okay. Uh, but if you I, don't have that, then whatever you have, I can use. The equivalent of a pry bar. I have it, like, this. That, I'll use that. It's that. There's a multitude of other frying things in here. That's loose. It's kind of loose. Go. This is also a frying tool. It's moving now. I see it's moving now. Valve cover removed. 
goes right with that. If you can see in the shot here, we have we are lining things up nicely in an organized manner, so that not only does my studio look cool for the next few shows that I do as we pull this thing apart further, uh, but to go uh, it's here. also going to make it easier to put things back. Uh, so when you have everything in order, and that's something that for me just gives me confidence, um, you know, going forward, that I know that if I just if I lost my mind entirely, which happened long ago that you could actually just kind of follow things back from one point and, and put that stuff on. Guys. He'll see you in a minute. Uh, this would be, I think, is that, that's the broken timing belt. That is your timing belt. That is a broken timing belt. That is uh, indeed a broken timing belt. Back to the interference engine question. Um, <laughs> the old mechanics used to say, if you have bolts left over, you did it right. Uh, so we'll this. That's definitely a broken timing belt. That's definitely, definitely a broken timing belt. There is no more question on that. Uh, so, bigger boot. I don't know. Has anybody verified whether or not this is a non-interference engine? Because, okay, so there, there, uh, Nas, I mean, that, that's the timing belt. That's the broken timing belt. And you can look at, I mean, this car sat for 10 years before I bought it. Um, and that's one of the worst things you can do, but... Uh, that's that's pretty much a catastrophic oh, I mean, failure. Yeah, of the that, that went when it went. It went. There was no. It didn't peel any teeth. Yeah. It just. It just. It, it just, just stretched and broke. Just snapped. Yeah. Stretched and broke at the time. So is there? Uh, we're not going to know if any valve damage happened. Not until the head comes until off. Until the head comes off. Okay. So next next step in removing the. Uh... Already pulled the end cap. Okay. That's where I got the belt from. Your end cap sitting there right at the end of your valve cover, if you look. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Nicely yeah, placed, yeah, nicely yeah, placed. Came right off of here. The two bolts are back through it, so you can't lose track of those. Excellent. Um, um, we are going to pick up some holes, too, when we're putting this back together. Cool. Yeah, it would be just, awesome to... This, this stuff is dry and cracked, and why send it out all like that? To fail it's not that those. expensive to replace hoses, so let's get that done. Yep. And is that the uh, little vacuum pump there that is going to... I'm, I'm assuming that's a, it's, it's a distribution block for vacuum. Okay. So next step here, remove that valve cover and upper belt cover. Next is remove spark plugs. Now, okay. key thing, removing spark plugs, it's good to... Do you have a piece of tape? I, I have tons of tape. I need, I need four pieces of tape, marked one through four. I have pens, too. Because you know exactly where I'm going with this. Yep. So, there's the, the spark plugs go in an order, right? And so, as you take things off, it's good to mark them when you take them off. One... Now, where is one? Uh, this is the good question, isn't it? No, it's a very, very easy question. And well, I'm used to Volkswagens just, where it's just, it's different than this. But one always starts close to the front of the engine. This is the front of the engine. One, two, three, four. If okay. it's if it's a if it's a V8, the one of those cylinders is further forward. On a Chevy, it's one is further forward. Okay. So it's one, three, five. Two, four, six. So one, since this is an inline three. four, how do you how do we know which? This is, is the front of the engine right here. Oh, because it's because it's a transverse mounted engine. This right. is where your crank is. So it's always gonna be the front of the engine. Okay, so, uh, so this is plug number one. There is tape number one. And I never get phone calls, but I will definitely get phone calls as soon as I try to start doing something. <laughs> There's two. Two. Thank you. Three. And... This is obviously four. The whole market anyways. I went to the trouble of making a tape with four on it. <laughs> And there's four. All right. And then and we're gonna distributor cap. We're gonna stack that up right over here, all nice. We'll keep the tape out because we're probably gonna need that yes, again. Yes, And also, once we get to the head, I would like a piece of cardboard. Okay. So as we're pulling head bolts, 
we can mark the cardboard. Mm. Put yes, that yes, bolt yes. in the piece of cardboard. And since I have a brand new monitor that I just got today, that's on the new streaming table, uh, that I have. Oh, we have a perfect piece of cardboard. Perfect exactly. piece of cardboard. And I was going to throw that thing on the fire earlier, but I was like, no, maybe let's keep that a little bit. Okay. I need a. Uh, oh, he left my rash. I'm still here, guys, even though John left. He went to go get the cardboard. I'm uh, going to get a sock and start pulling plugs. Uh, some usable bits because that will be a knife. It doesn't even need to be, you just need a place just for four I, things, I, right? So I just need to make the mark where they go. That's too that's too. One piece of cardboard. There's going to be uh, four. How many head bolts are there? Um, I don't know. I haven't got there yet. I'm still working on plugs. Okay. So we'll just have this whole piece of cardboard. Ooh, isn't that a nice piece of cardboard? That'll be used. Things. All right. It's my job to keep uh, everything organized without taking away tools that Nas is actually using. And so he says, where's the wrench I was just using? And I'll be like, oh, put it away. I was helping. Huh. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what size plugs are. Um, let's see here. Uh, remove spark plugs. See chapter five, ignition system. I do have multiple uh, different plug Plug things. Yep, I need one that's bigger than this. Okay. So I would need the break. There should only be one other size. It should be a big and a small. And that okay. should be the one I need right there. See? Let's see. So the hole is very tight going down in there, too. This is too big. Too big, okay. Uh... This is the other same okay. same size as that, right? Is it? So just uh, got the uh, many many points on it instead of. In. How about this? It's so odd. Let me see what I brought to. I also brought to. Well, it's just to be on the same side because you never know. Isn't that weird? That's it. That's when it fits. Locks on. It is. Thank you. Uh huh. Third, uh, third or fourth or fifth time. Thank you, charm. Whatever. Yeah. These are. Well, extra ones, other, other big ones. Go. So I'm gonna. I don't know. I don't see anybody has found the answer on the interference engine. Dance Hall Gamer, thanks for uh, the ball. Thank you, Matt. Um, first time seeing something like this on Twitch. Well, my friend, you're gonna see a lot more of it because Not I have anymore. seven cars and they always need stuff. And pretty much if they don't need stuff, then I'll just like buy another car that needs stuff or bring in friends that have stuff that they need to work on. Like uh, 
like Nas, like has... like this guy who's he's the he's the textbook friend right out of the manual of himself. Wow, these plugs are loose. I mean, look at that. Did you see that? That's uh, that makes it easy, I guess. <laughs> Shouldn't be that easy. But he's got a Maxima that needs brakes, and what else does your Maxima need? Well, so so the idea is my Maxima is a 19, it's currently 1995, it's got a lot of 1997 Maxima body parts on it, but the idea is to eventually bring it more to uh, the Fast and Furious Maxima state. I have, Ooh. only instead of it being automatic, I'm putting a manual in it, I also have a quaif locking differential for it, Okay. Um, so it'll be converted from automatic to manual, that's part of it, rebuild the manual transmission while we're at it, and then I also need to re go through the engine and put my Vortex supercharger back on. So all of that, if everything goes just right, will be done here in this garage, right here where you're seeing this stuff. Um, my son also has, he needs, uh, he needs his engine rebuilt and also has a 97 mask on. Huh. So like father, like son, yes. he is Maxima too. He's, he's He's just Dobot and Chad. Oh, okay. Is uh, Brandon. Well, and Brandon, we got a we got a place. The, the this uh, the Civic here is well, it wasn't really going to be the test bed for some of the content for the John Wanna Garage shows, but as it turns out, uh, the Civic is going to be the test bed. So what I have planned here, and I'm hoping you to this one, two, three, four, just so we can make sure that. Yep. They'll look pretty good, don't they? They're not... Those were likely changed 10 years ago um, when this car was redone. I mean, they're dark, so they have... They have uh... Let's see. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're, they're a little fuel-rich, because ideally they should be a white or almost a whitish-brown, mm -hmm. the conductor should be, because this, this is heavy on fuel. This is rich fuel. Um, okay. That's why it's so gassy when you start it. It smells so gassy, I'm assuming, because it's dumping a lot of fuel. And a lot of that's probably be due to vacuum leaks because we have so many broken hoses. Mm -hmm. So we'll take care of that while we're doing this. Nice. Hey, uh, spark plugs are removed. What's your book say next? Spark plug are removed. Uh, make sure all the pistons are down. This is step three. You want to make sure that none of the pistons are at the top where the intake valves might hit them. Which is possible, which is a possibility on some cars. Still, no definition on Still the non Still, cannot tell you whether it's a possibility because on your car. This manual it covers the CVCC engine and the 1200 Civic engine, which are similar but but different. Um, so they're not giving specifics here. Careful before doing this step. Bear in mind that you want to turn the crankshaft as little as possible. If you meet any resistance, any is in italics. Uh, dirt, turning the crankshaft in the usual counterclockwise direction, turn it back the other way very carefully. This is one of the few exceptions to the rule that you turn it only clock, counterclockwise, right? Exception to the rule that you turn it only clockwise. Um, it's, it's turning freely. We didn't have any noise. This is, these are things that are giving me some hope. It's turning freely. When we tried to start the engine, the pistons were moving, right. but there was no noise. There was no clackety clackety. There was no, or there was no, there was no and, and it didn't slow down when it hit the top, like it was right. trying to push through a valve or something. Right. So I, I'm hoping it's not an interference engine. Um, it's it's. Or if it is an interference I can, engine, I can, that it sh that it just shut down. Got lucky. Because it never it never it didn't run everything. Past the point everything it still moves freely. It still moves freely on the bottom end. Um, I just I just grabbed the vacuum pump and moved it. But as we get down into once the head is off, an inspection of the valves uh, and the pistons, for that matter, will uh, will prove or disprove yes. any of that. And probably I'm, I'm figuring there'll be clues in the book as we go through this. Um, so now check the position of the TDC mark on the crankshaft pulley. Okay. When I the need... TDC uh, mark is lined up with the crankshaft uh, with the crankcase pointer used to set timing, the piston is is in cylinder one, would be all the way at the top at TDC. I could use a flashlight. Oh, we got flashlights. We got flashlights. Thanks, sir. Professional. And we have other, like, I have a light that can hang right here that can provide a little light in general. When I do things by myself, 
I, I have invested in, you know, all the aids that I could have to make things easier, like, you know, the right tools and, you know, lights, this one. Mm -hmm. I was never that guy in band um, or marching band, but um, this if, if my kids ha got their hands on this, they'd be twirling it like a lightsaber. Belts, too. This, this, the alternator belt is about to go. Ah. Come look at this. Just so you're aware. See that big chunk right there? Yes. The whole back of the belt's missing. Wow. Yes. So, belts, belts hoses. So these are also things that will be done to the little Honda here. Uh, the Honda will be kind of our first uh, major project. With, as this, once the head comes off and it's going to go out for porting and polishing and any valve work that needs to be done to freshen it up, um, I have a Volkswagen Squareback, a 1971 Volkswagen Squareback that we need to pull the motor out of. This I actually know how to do myself, but uh, if Nas is going to be here to help with that. That'll be pretty fun because... You'd be amazed if you don't know, if you're not a Volkswagen person, how easy it is to pull the motor out. It's nothing like uh, any sort of front engine car that you've ever experienced. There's four bolts, and you make sure the throttle cable's disconnected, and maybe a couple wires to the coil. You take out the four bolts, you have a jack underneath it, you give it a yank, and then you, uh, well, in some, in, with, with a bus, you just slide it out. With a square back, you actually have to jack the car up over it, and then you slide the motor up. It's really that easy. It should be able to be done in about an hour. Um, however, nothing's usually easy, as you can see. Because... Everything that's supposed to be done in about an hour it takes two at least. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, it turns out that a uh, good length for a show is about two hours. So if it, if it ends up going real smoothly, which it won't, uh, we'll make sure to drag it out to a full two hours. <laughs> Let's go to chat. Uh, let's see here. Same here, guy. Three, I keep buying them. Um, let's see. Uh, Dance Hall Gamer, you have three of what? I may have missed something. Um, hey, John. Yes. Grab me a 14 and a 15 mil. Wrench or socket? Socket. I'm not sure if it's 14 or 15, but the crank bolt on this, I need to. This is John. Hi. Okay, yes. Well, the last time that she had me, that I did a video checkup with her, she said she was putting a refill on there. And that was part of the agreement that we made at that time. I told her that sometime in 2022 I would make an appointment for a physical. I'm not doing what you said she was going to do. Double check on that, please. Trying to get the crank to turn. Hey. Um, John had to take a phone call. He will be right back with you guys. Okay, I'll make, get back with you to schedule that. Thank you. See, here's here's the good news, John. That, uh, when you're turning that, that thing's turning? That's your crank, Kate. That's your crank turn. Okay. Okay. What don't you hear? I don't hear any Anything. Anything. Okay. Right? I'm and not that, hearing any interference. And that's a crank turning at a reasonable rate right there. The... I mean, I've, I've made a full You're, cycle. You are turning the crank right now to ensure that we are at TDC-1? Yes. TDC-1, right? Top, dead center, cylinder 1. I'm good with terms. I'm just trying to find the marks on the crank pulley. Sorry I had to take that call. I avoided the first call. Um, yep, thank you, Apache. Cool. Uh, a hose job. Uh, whoa. Oh, wow. Um, engine is confirmed non-interference for bigger boot. Good. Yes. Um, I can send, well, which you also just proved by doing that. I can send the reference link with the information. Either way, you have non-switch valves. Woohoo! Woohoo! This is the, the part where we dance. 
Um, I save interpretive dance. We? Um, we yeah, well. You have a mouse in your pocket? Uh, that's kind of weird. <laughs> um, no, it's a banana. Um, <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> or a pickle. Or no, a, a, a cucumber. Uh, man, I have this picture of Bon Scott, and this is really weird. So I'm a huge ACDC fan. Actually, I'm not really that big. I'm about 5'8". But I am a huge ACDC fan. He is a much larger ACDC fan than I am when we talk about stature. (laughs) But so I I follow the ACDC thing on the socials thing. And this photo comes up of Bon Scott on stage with his shirt off and his tight jeans on that he used to wear back in the 70s. And I love Bon Scott. I feel like the spirit of him is actually in in me. And so I, I... copy this photo because i was like man i want that i don't care I, I'm, I'm taking that photo i want to have that in my photo so i can be like bon scott you're my god and uh the first time i showed it to northwest bunny she was like oh my god really that's the photo that you took and i'm like what are you talking about she's like is that a snake in his jeans <laughs> and i'm like oh oh that's what you're talking about so his jeans are really tight and apparently uh bon scott uh, you know, uh, Bon Scott that, was Pete Davidson. He was, uh, he was a Pete Davidson of his time. Yeah. Anyways. So <laughs> yeah, I was like, and, and now when I look at that picture, that's all I see. So <laughs> it kind of ruined the picture for me. Cause I'm, that's not exciting to me. Um, seeing him going, yeah! that's exciting to me, but the super tight jeans and, uh, whatever, uh, it's not, but anyways, so there we go. Um, do I have Usam GG? Do I have a Barbie car? Um, honestly, right up there, it's not a Barbie car, but it is. It is a Porsche 911 GT3 Power Wheels hanging from the ceiling. Um, so, yeah, uh, kind of, kind of. That one doesn't need any work though, so we're not going to work on that one. Um, These marks are very hard to see. Dwayne it was definitely not a gherkin. It was more like one of those pickles you buy in a bag. You take half a day to eat. A hot mama? uh, Yeah. Yeah, I think think these are... So so see right here, John? You can barely see them, but see your marks. Um, See the... So so right here... Okay, see that little pointy thing sticking out? Yeah. And see there's marks cut into it below there? Yep. So that's top dead center, and I verified that by putting this in the number one cylinder. And then as I brought up the number one cylinder, it moves slightly. Now I know it's top dead center. Huh? Brilliant. If you can't find the marks, it's a good way to get there. Because oftentimes, you'll because find when you're trying to find the TDC mark there, it's like the the belt, uh, the pulley is all scratched up, or it has like... It's it just looks- dirt time. There's, you know, those marks were put in there. And then it was painted usually, and though and over time the paint wears, the marks fill up with dirt, and it's hard to find them. Um, a wire brush works in that situation too. But by finding top dead center, it becomes then very easy to find the marks. And this is this is you know the, the nuts and bolts part. That's uh, much more simple. But a, a mechanic gives me the comment, haven't knowing that it's at TDC because you don't want to just pull the head off and be like, ah, eh, willy nilly, just pull it off. It uh, needs to be set at TDC. In this case, because it's not an interference engine, and because the tiny belt's already snapped, it's not as big a deal, because before we put the head back on, can, we're going to put everything in top dead center so it all goes together properly, and okay. there's no problems there. So it's not as big a deal in this case. But if you were, if the timing belt was, if was on there... Again, you're still pulling the head, so you're not, you're not moving the engine while you're pulling the head. Right. So it's not a problem until you go to put it back together if it's not a top dead center. But if you forgot later, you could totally screw yeah. up everything that you tried to do. You could. Which you is could. why they put this in, in the in that order there. Okay. Too. We're uh, top dead center. That's okay. where you want to be next. All, All right. right, so next step on the idiot's guide here. Uh, and we're making a check to now check the position of TDC and the correction pulley when the TDC is marked on the TDC is usually why I've got this. Okay. Uh, Civic 1200S, which is what we have here. Yes, the sir. pointer is a raised line. Okay, we've got that. This is still talking about that. Everybody, make sure the TDC mark is not opposite the crankcase pointer. So we've pretty much got that. This is all additional information on TDC because this is where the average handy person like myself wants more information. Uh, now, step four, position the camshaft. Now you want to turn the camshaft so that the values are lined up in the position they would be for TDC. 
Uh, if you find that neither valve timing mark on the camshaft timing ge belt gear is in alignment, uh, use a 12 millimeter wrench to slowly turn the camshaft timing belt gear counterclockwise until the number one valve timing mark on the gear is aligned. Does that all make uh, perfect sense to you? It, it does. I need, uh, I need a 12 millimeter. Wrench or socket? Um, one second here. I need a 12 millimeter socket would be preferable with the, my wrench is right here. My, I need to order my expensive, in. my expensive ratchet. How much you think I paid for those speakers? Bay sound. Bav sound. Ah. So those okay. are replacement BMW speakers. They send you a toolkit with them. They send that's how expensive the speakers are that it comes with not only the socket, it but cost, it cost me a grand to replace the speakers in that X3 out there. Woo! I, I hope it sounds really good. Um Yes and no that I have to do oh, some work. Oh, oh. No, I have to do some work. Um their frames are very, very picky, and if you tighten them too much on one corner, it'll move it just enough that the cone starts to vibrate. So you have to be very, like, you almost have to tighten the bolts with a, with a torque wrench <laughs> to get them even. Wow. That sounds awesome, though. Yeah. <laughs> no pun intended. Um, let's see here. Uh, Pusan GT, and do I have the Super Mark IV? Uh, Hussam, I do not have a Super Mark for Let me go look at your book real quick. Just yep, one yep, second. Yep. Um, <laughs> of course he did, Duangus. Of course he did. That's funny. McNaus was just walking forward to, to pass me here in 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 the uh, Twitch play because it's a slight lag, and I, I stepped out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you for following, Hussam. Nice. Um, but no, I, I'm not... Uh, and here I am looking at the, ca the cameras over here. Actually, um, this is an arrow on head. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. I I I have a Toyota FJ Cruiser, so I like Toyota. I've never actually owned a Supra though. Nothing against them. I just my particular passion is Volkswagens and Porsches. Uh, so I have a couple of Porsches that are my fancy cars, and then I always have some sort of rotating stock of uh, well cars that make me happy. Um, like this little Civic that I bought from a friend, uh, a, for, a friend from the Forza community, actually. I've always wanted a little Honda Civic because they're just so cute and they're super fun and they're getting rarer and rarer to find these days. Um, but Super Mark IV, hey, I'm all, I'm all about it. I just, I have not owned one, uh, nor do I probably plan on owning one because now they're so expensive that I, well, that if I had one, I'd have to trade it for a Porsche and I wouldn't trade a Supra for a Porsche. 78 keyway points. Uh, Referencing the book. Yes, sir. Well, so it's interesting because keyway points. Uh, let's see. I'm just wondering if. Uh, so it almost looks like this engine's been replaced. Huh? It, just because of the book is the only reason it would look like that. Because, so in the book. In your book, you have your 75 and before, flush with head, keyway points up. See that little mound? Uh -huh. And then your marks come across, right? 76 to 79, there's supposed to be an arrow in the head. See that arrow in the head? Uh -huh. And the mark lines up with that? Yeah. Now come over here. See that mound? Right there? Yep. See how this lines up on both sides straight with the top of the head? Mm -hmm. And you see the arrow down here. I do not. So according to your book, we should go by 75 instructions. Because there's no little pointer. I mean, as far as, as far as that, for sure. Because that's where, this is where it says to set it on this type of Cam, right? I mean, you you saw the same thing I did, right? Well, let's double check. Yeah, yeah. Um, and as far as I, I mean, guys, got guy that I bought from, he he may not yeah. know. Here's here's what we're looking at, guys. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> so, um, John's is supposed to look like the seventy six to seventy nine, 
which has an arrow cast into the head. The timing mark should line up with that arrow. What we're seeing when we go over there, though, is the 75 and before, which has that, that mound on the, on the sprocket, as well as the marks lining up on both sides of the head. Okay. So that's where we're at. Okay. That's done. That's done. Now we're belts. Alternator belt. So this, yeah, so that would imply that this is not the original engine. Uh, it would make me wonder, at least. Yeah. Um, but we can we can pull the we can pull numbers off the engine off the block and double check that too. Yep. Good fun stuff. Bigger bot. Uh, JD and Parker, it's whack. Even Miatas are highly recommend now. Uh, true. Trueness. It's the truth. So right now we are getting the the cam positioned properly. We did that. We're on the alternator belt now. Now we're removing the alternator belt. Okay. This and this is the next step because you already read that. Mm -hmm. Wow! Look at it. He's like just moving on. He's just moving on. Okay. So we're now on step six. Remove alternator belt and any other belts on the camshaft pulley. Uh, see chapter seven cooling system. Procedure 10, alternator belt replacement. If there are extra belts, or you have air conditioning and power steering, which we do not have air conditioning or power steering, they have to come off too. So just the alternator belt. So there's your... Well, the alternator belt and the air pump belt. And so is there a little uh, tensioner? That yes. Holds that, uh, so that's what he's doing is... Re yes, I'm listening. So, so your alternator usually has a bottom or a top bolt yeah. that locks it into... A fixed position then the other end of the either the top or the bottom whichever end is not on that fixed position will move in or out so that you can tighten the belt off of that right so it doesn't go wee -wee 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 -wee. that really really annoying sound that some cars make that is a problem most likely every a, kia every kia uh makes an annoying it's, belt sound because I, it's not a properly adjusted uh, i, I call it the kia mating call <laughs> So you've owned a few of these Kias? My, my daughter and my son have both owned Kias. Kia Sepia or any... Um, any... My daughter has, in I, she's, she's, she's owned it since 2013, bought a Kia Spectra 5, a 2004 Kia Spectra 5. She can afford to go out and buy a brand new car today. Just keeps driving that. Hmm. It's... Don't fix it if it ain't broke. But, you know... It... If you're some people, you know, so some people drive Priuses, and Priuses a Prius is a great car. But the people that drive Prius, or the people that might be driving a, a an older Kia Spectra Five, having a new car just is not something that's worth it to them. And, Their and, car provides transportation; it serves its purpose, and having something nicer, newer, better um, might just not be interesting. And and she hates change. Some people just hate change. And change itself is difficult. For some I, people. There was, there was a gentleman yesterday that was at the Volvo shop when I picked up Northwest Bunny and getting her Volvo from getting a $400 uh, service um, that essentially included changing the oil. Sorry, my favorite sweat will explode. That's right. Sweat, sweat, sweat. <laughs> and uh, there's an interesting guy in there that was picking up his much older Volvo wagon. And I asked the, the tech behind the desk, I was like, how many miles are on that thing? And he's like, uh, he looks, he's like 293,000. And that guy's really interesting. He like keeps these cars forever. I don't know how he gets so many miles out of them. Although 293,000 miles for a uh, 80, 1980 Volvo wagon. It's really just kind of getting broken in. My uh, my E36 could use a rebuild, but it's at 305,000 miles. Yeah. Uh, if you don't know that uh, Japanese cars and European cars, you can get a tremendous amount of miles of them if you just change the oil and take good care of them. Um, whereas, uh, but actually, and then some American cars. One of my, I have a friend back in Hudson, Wisconsin. He drives a little Cobalt uh, four-door car, and he's a he delivers pizza, and uh, puts mega miles on it. Drives it every winter. The car he makes his money driving that car, and it's got like three hundred and thirty thousand miles on it. Um, so some some you know, but some might not go a hundred. 
So there's a lot of automotive journals that drove the Million Mile Lexus. There was a uh, Matt Ferris. LS 400? Ferris, yeah, the LS 400, yeah. Million Mile Lexus. Yeah. That's um, sitting with Tavares in Florida right now, but that was that was Ferris' car. He had it, and then it, it got passed around there, through I, a ton I was, of automotive journalists. I was this close to driving that car. Yeah. It, I mean, it, it, it spent it spent time with so many automotive journalists, and, and that's how it got 10 million miles, but it's yeah. it's still running. It's an amazing car. Yeah, it is. And been been uh, cared for well by people that care about them. Except apparently it smells a little bit. Because there's been a lot of automotive journalists in it. <laughs> Spanky ones. <laughs> um, I'm just trying to find the other side of this. To remove the alternator to belt. bolt on this to slide this too. This is the air pump. Okay. The alternator, i got to get to the bottom. Again, it's everything's a little piping here, and some of it may be better to go through the wheel. I think. So, do you think we could stuff an LS in this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, but we'd have to. <laughs> it'd be like right there in your lap. It would, yeah. And it would, it would ruin such a sweet little car. Well, would it, would it ruin it to put an LS? In? I don't know. It would definitely change its driving characteristics. It would not be the same car. I, I can't imagine it actually being fun to to drive this car with that kind of horsepower. Oh, here's. No. Although you were having fun with the wheeling today, so. Uh yeah, but that's there's very little risk when 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 playing Forza games. You can have a 1,356 horsepower key car and really not worry about what's going to happen. Um. However, in the real world, when you stomp in the gas and all of a sudden the rear end kicks itself all the way around to the front end, uh, that could be detrimental to not only your health, but your insurance costs and other people around you. So we try to avoid that at all costs. Um, but it's always nice to talk about an LS swap, isn't it? But this, well, all the kids are doing these things. Some people, some people. This engine has 54 horsepower stock. And at 115,000 miles, it probably has more like 52 horsepower. Um, the hope would be that after after we get the head off and take it in uh, to a shop for a little bit of porting and polishing. So porting means that they're going to uh, they're going to use a grinder and really nicely grind out uh, the intake ports uh, a bit more so that more air can get in there. Will they also do the exhaust port, or is that not? Yeah, they'll do the exhaust ports too, so it flows better out. So it flows better, air flows better in, and air flows better out. And then they'll polish the entire thing, which means they'll use really fine material and polish all the surfaces so that the tolerances are able to be that much more specific. John, I need you to stand here. Whoa, the yep, you get to hold the flashlight. Oh, See that bolt right there? Yep. At the bottom of the alternator? I'm going to try going for that. Yes, I see it. From the bottoms. This is what I'm really good at. This is my hidden talent. I've always, I've always thought as I worked on cars with people, and I was, or they were working on my cars, that if I held the flashlight really good, it would make the process go faster. Yeah, I thought it was. And it kind of does. So I have, I have focused a lot of my energy. I'm learning to be the best flashlight holder in the world. And some of my personal advice to you is anytime you do something, make it your best one. You know what, John? Go grab me a 12 millimeter wrench. Okay. I think it's 12. It can't be 100%. It's all my sense of field. 12 millimeter wrench, come around. Hey, you lost your 10 year balloons. Yeah, the caddy threw the caddy through the uh, told him not to. Yeah, let's uh, never does. Yeah, the, my tenth anniversary at, uh, at turn ten just happened a while back. And uh, uh it I think it's a thirteen or fourteen. Uh, I think you're looking at a thirteen there. You know when you lie on your back on John's store, there's some interesting things you see. Yeah, it's like like when the forklift picked up the insulation tiles and dug its forks into them. Ah, see right there. Oh, right straight up on your desk. That's true. That <laughs> that is true. Yep. Okay. Right there. Yep, that is. You're on the on the. I think you're looking at a fourteen, huh? I think so. 
think I am. Yep. Sorry about that. It's all right. Sometimes third time's a charm, right? Well, it'd be better if I knew the first time. It seems like it would be easier that way. There we go. Precision lighting. The lighting's for you. You understand that, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely on there really good now. Get on there again, yep. You have any space, but I do have breaker bars as well. If you go on those wrenches, but there's no not enough space to do anything out there. Oh! He is strong! Oh, I think it's the wrench and a wrench. Oh, the, the Nothing. secret technique. You have your own built-in breaker bar. That's why you didn't hand the 13 back to me. It's like, no, I'm gonna need this. But yeah. Or fifteen. Now the. I see the alternator moving. I can see the. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Chris, see that belt is doing. Yeah, that that was about to fail totally. Yeah. All right, now. It's that one. You know, I gotta get the front one. Okay. Oh. Well, that off. one's off. Now the front one here. Now we got the top, top loose. And then, so that's the alternator belt that just came off, and now the air pump belt. Now it seems funny to me that that a car, well, a motor and an internal combustion engine is essentially an air pump. So what does the air pump on the air pump do? Not. It actually is. It is a vacuum pump. It's a vacuum pump. Okay. Um. Oh, there it is. It's back side on it. And this one. In your eyes. You can't even see up in there. This no, I don't need any. This is all, this is all I feel. I don't need a light right now. I okay. do need a... Uh, that 12 milligram wrench again, though. Okay. Now we get it. Yes, sir. Thank you. If a crawler is something that's more comfy to lay on, I have that. Blankets, cardboard, all kinds of things we have here. Let's take a look at the chat here. Um, pass the scalpel. Time to surgically remove the bolt. Yeah. Uh, Jay Mercer. Hey, how's it going? Long time to see you. Jay Mercer, what's up, man? Nice to see you. Welcome to my garage. Um, LS4 came sideways and and from the course, yeah, Cadillac Eldorado. Yeah. Right. Um, one use one JC is one of the greatest engines ever. Yeah, I would, I would agree there. I would agree. Okay, now let me get this loose. And again, limited room. In the, in the case of what the uh, book was saying is required, in, in my, my list, the, the most important thing was friend. <laughs> At this point, yes, I yeah. agree. <laughs> I would agree with that. But pretty pretty decently acceptable so far, right? I mean, everything so far, yeah. is simple and not like, oh my God, what do you mean? Get at that bolt. There's like eight things. Because... We still have to pull a whole intake, a whole exhaust manifold. Yeah. And we got to see, hope not all the bolts break. So we're, we're a long ways away from being too excited yet. But we may want to even spray some stuff on those bolts. On those exhaust bolts, especially. That may be something you want to do right now so we can start that. Yeah. We've got the Max film here. It's royal purple. Uh, 12 millimeters. Or no, I might have a 12 millimeter socket. Give me a second. thingies organized. I'm not going to spray 
on that while you're like right there. Good idea. So that would, uh, that's, that would be a considerate thing to do. Nice! You see it moving. I'd like to thank Royal Purple for making some of the best penetrating loop. Another thing that I'm really good at, I'm good at spraying the stuff. <laughs> took, a, took about, you know, four years of college classes. Figured it out myself. Okay. So, is this fun? Is this fun to watch? I mean, uh, we're just. Are you? Is are the you point of tears? is the point of watching to learn something or just to hang out with some other car people? Uh, because there are going to be car people that are in here. Most of my community. Um, most of the Forza community, they have a lot of love for cars. Some people are more mechanically um, adept, and uh, and others are more watchers, kind of like me. Um, some people aspire to, uh, you know, to swap everything. And oh yeah, the belt is, now this belt. This is the one. This this, this is, one should not have been on the car anymore. So air pump belt that actually doesn't look too bad. No. Nope. Um, Alternator belt, looking very rickety. Uh, I bet I could pull it apart very easily if I if I tried in the slightest bit. We're gonna put these here with the other belts right there. Give My, me a short flat screwdriver so I can just pull these holes and get them all the way up. Okay. So I don't even gotta think about it anymore. My my best short flat screwdriver. Is that short enough or not? Um, oh, you want do like super shorty? Yeah, I want to study. It's kind of funny to hear you say. Um, well, I'll just trust you on that. Um, <laughs> it's called study screwdriver. It is, it is, and it's funny. If you're twelve, I am always twelve. Okay, I'm always twelve. I stop aging back. Those screwdrivers are, are, are hard ones to find because they're so little. They can get shoved in places. Well, <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, it's just not what we're ahead, John. Exactly. I've got two stubby Phillips head ones that I've found so far. Um, I can always try to scratch it, too. I can find the right size. There's some things that it used them often as a way to hit the locations in the depths. This is, this is a somewhat shorter so screwdriver. How about that? I think I'll get it this way. This is a good opportunity for me to kind of look through my tools and be like, oh, look what I have! Oh, you know? What kind of stuff like that. Um, wow, helping hand uh, measuring tape. There you go. I know I have one of those. Now I'm on. Now I'm on a hunt. Now I'm on the hunt. I don't need it, but <laughs> keep looking for it. Can't give up. Perhaps, perhaps the fact that I have two Philip ones was was giving me the impression that I did actually have one of these. Oh. I did find a chisel though, and the chisel goes with the other chisels, not with the tools. Um, a little bit of organizing needs to happen all the time. Check the chat here. I only hope that it could be in that position one day. Um, yeah. I've actually had 40 plus years working on cars. Uh, do Angus. I, just, I like watching other people work. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Um, while John sleeps, the cars come to life like Herbie and play checkers. They they do. Not this one though, because this one uh, has broken. Oh, uh, 
regular players or channel locks just so I can uh -huh. try to twist Big ones or little ones? Bigger ones so I can get on these hoses. That was one would work right there. Either one. Blue one. Let me try the blue one. Channel locks are one of my favorites. I do have a variety pack of those from small, medium to large. Um. <sighs> We're going to eventually need to be careful. Huh? Mm. I have um, a suitable coolant container. Might create something out of a five gallon bucket. I would normally use it as full of stuff that I don't want to have to rehome. You are. Yes! He wins. You won that battle. I did win that battle. Just gonna be just a tiny bit shorter. That's it. You don't want to do is get that cool looking. On the floor because then it gets underneath the tiles and then it's just the sweetest stink oh, I bet. forever. Um, so we'll put one of those pans and perhaps I will just cut off some of the top of this bucket so that it does fit. I'm going to jack up the car just a little bit and it would fit right under there. I'm, I'm going to get tools straightened out real quick before okay. I get started on the next. Okay. Are you doing any water or anything? I oh, will get a drink in a minute. Here. I'm also really good at getting snacks. That's uh, one of my other callings. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, we, I mean, we're probably we're going to get the head off tonight. I, huh? would, I would hope so. It, it, provided that it doesn't fight too hard. Um, it's it's all about it, how well it, the intake and the, in the exhaust, exhaust, the exhaust manifold, off. particularly. Yep. That be, but yep. you have this. You have this thing. You have this thing, and this I, thing will be very useful, I'm I, imagining. I did bring a electric ratchet for a reason. I also Is it brought an, my, it's, it's an impact? I also brought my electric impact for uh -huh. a reason. Because it seems the impact is probably going to be that's we, a lifesaver. If we have to pull anything else. Yeah. The intake is so tiny. There's, there's, the whole thing is hard, but everything's going to come off in one fell swoop, isn't it? Yeah. So that's it. We'll pull the intake off this side. Yeah. Um, the exhaust manifold, I think what will happen is the pump and the exhaust manifold will stay in one piece and go that way Yeah. enough that we can get, should be able to get everything out of here, I'm hoping. That's my hope anyways. We'll see what the book says. Mm -hmm. Here's the nice thing about, so, 19 years old, um, no, I guess it was 29 years old. I was at a friend's house. We were having a big barbecue in his backyard. Yeah. Um, and we decided that we were going to roast some marshmallows. He he had maple trees all along his front driveway. So in the winter or in the spring, he would tap the maple trees, burn down the maple, make syrup. Mm -hmm. Big wood pit out in the backyard. I went out front, got about a one pound coffee can with about that much gas in it. Mm -hmm. What I didn't know is while I was out front, his brother was out there with a WD-40 can and a lighter trying to light the fire. So when I went back to the fire, I tipped the can with, like I said, just about that much gas in a one-pound coffee can. But it flared. Well, when it flared, because there was already some fire in there that I didn't know about. So I pulled back, and when I pulled back, I doused myself pretty much head to toe. Oh. So that's that's the arms, That's the, but that's also why the shirt. I did try it at home, but because of that, I put a little blood into every job I do because there's no fat under my skin. So if you think about it, when you rub against something, your skin gives. Yeah. Because of the fat under it, usually. Yeah. It doesn't give when there's no fat under it. 
So you so, so you I I tend easily. to rip easily. It's it's more like old people's skin kind of because it's well partially because I'm old too. If you'd like to uh, clean thy hands. We have paper towels. I will do that at the end because until then it's just kind it's of just a redundant process. It's just a redundant process. Um. Next in the book. So we get the book dirty too. Um. This is the crankshaft. Remove the alternator belt and any other belts. Remove the water pump pulley. Or if the pulley does not temp, remove the water pump. Chapter 7, cooling system. I help you out there. You do that. You would do the book so I don't get the book dirtier than I already yep. am. I'm sorry. That's okay. It, a, a good dirty book shows that it's been... been <laughs> I, a, uh, yeah, a, a, a good dirty mechanics manual shows it's actually been used. That's what I meant to say. I knew that's what you meant to say. That's why I got you. Is there, uh, I'm trying to find here, 7, what, 67, okay, so chapter 7, we fuel supply. 1978 Civic 1200 with a broken timing belt, like that. Where, where? Oh my god, now, now I've completely lost where we were and uh, now the uh, reference was time of 151, not 131, so 1. I, I, I'm actually spoiled Apache. I have a stethoscope, uh, listening stethoscope at home. Okay. Okay. Yes, I've, I've also used a stick, just stuck a stick on the, a paint stick on the top of a valve cover and put my ear to it because it'll transfer that sound more easily. Chapter 7, cooling system. There we go. Where's the water pump on this? Remove the water pump. Check coolant level. Change coolant. Well, to remove the water pump, we're going to want to remove the, the coolant first, right? Yep. It's, it's going to come out. Um, so clamps and hoses. Um, remove radiator for repair. Flush radiator. It's right here. Uh, so... This out because that will have to come out. We'll get a safety tray put So all this pretty tile floor that you see here, it's really pretty, but it's really useless as far as like doing actual work on cars because it's not waterproof. So if oil, coolant, water, anything gets spilled on it, it goes right underneath it and rests against uh, my concrete. And it will, in the case of coolant, will sit there and basically stink forever. So that's why I'm putting this tray underneath here so that as we take the coolant out, we have something to make sure no coolant gets on the floor. Because on a daily basis, this is a studio that stores cars, not necessarily a working garage that we're doing all kinds of work in. Uh, but we're, that's going to be changing. So um, I spent thousands of dollars on this floor, and I've had to take it up a couple different times because I spilled, of all things, transmission fluid. Um, on it and it just seeped right through got all over the the concrete and just stank to high heaven so we don't want that um i'm going to experiment here with this um There you go. There, an exhibition of strength for your amazement. Okay, so I'm going to uh, let me do the cutting. Uh, I'm going to cut this this uh, 
bucket down a little bit, and we'll use this for collecting coolant. If I can work. How does this thing work? Um, this is the water. It's all jammed up. So it says pull the water pump fully, right? Um, and, and we'd have to go back to the other spot. That's right. Back where we were. Next up is pull the water pump fully, I'm pretty sure. Um, remove the water pump pulley. Or, if the pulley does not detach from the water pump, remove the water pump. Uh, do you want me to continue on Chapter 7, Cooling nope, System Procedure 11, Water Pump Replacement? No, nope, we're good. Let's look and see. 12 millimeter again. 10 maybe. 10? I think the bolts in these are 10. Here we go with the fancy knife fixin'. There. And no, not there. There we go. And there, knife coming out. Okay, so we're going to cut this. It's actually not going to work at all. I may need to steal a baking pan. Why would they do that? So. Oh, that's the first. That's the first. Why did they do that? Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so here's my question. We're pulling water pump bolts, right? Mm -hmm. The ideal time to pull a water pump pulley bolt would be when the water pump pulley is still locked in place with like maybe a belt. But they had to take that off first. Yes, which isn't a big deal because I'm going to get a 10 millimeter. I'm going to throw it on my electric ratchet and we're going to pop them off anyways. But you understand my point there. Yeah, it would have, the nicer order would have been to say remove the power the water pump fully before you remove the belt. At least it will provide it. resistance. Is there, There's no easy way to just like jam something in there that will hold it or it's a, it's a solid thing. It's, no, it's, yeah, it's got a... I should be able to hold it with my hand and get loose with the electric branch. Just like that? No? No, not yet. Yeah. Oh, blast. Oh! Oh, getting old. That's 11 millimeter. Mm -hmm. But it was in the 10. And, and that's going to be a small end. And that's a 12. What did you, you want? 10? Yeah. 10. That's a 10. Okay. Let my very slightly younger eyes help you. What's up? Yeah, the wagons. Yeah, and the other reason why we don't want any antifreeze in here is because uh, this is the cat's house, Jeez, yeah. and the cats would be drawn to that. Nice. Um, these are water pump pulley bolts. I'll bring the water pump pulley over in a minute. Okay. In the middle there. I'm going to make a mental list of parts that I will need to uh, possibly go down to visit my friend Brian Cottrell again down at B and B. Uh, B and B auto fixins in Washougal, Washington. Oh yeah. yeah you can put those three bolts in there. Go right. One, two, three in there. Huh. Um, because I'm imagining that he's going to have all of the parts that we're going to need: belts and things, and uh, okay. timing belt. Uh, now we, belt, can, now belt. we can move forward to the next. Uh, so the next step here is. We got uh, water pump pulley off. 
The biggest reason I'm following steps is because if I walk out of here and get hit by a bus today, mm-hmm. pray it doesn't happen. No, at yeah, least you sure. know exactly how we got to where we're at. Exactly. Yep. And the way this book is written, it's kind of just fun to follow along. Yep. Uh, so we remove the water pump pulley. Remove the left engine mount. Yep. Okay. That's we, uh, let's let's get it. We still haven't removed any antifreeze. Um. Well, it's 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 saying to not. I know. Um. I'm assuming that they're gonna get there at some get point. There, we'll uh, keep watching. Re- All right. Um. So we need your jack. Okay. Place your jack that. under the oil pan and we raise need, the engine just barely enough. We need a jack and we need a piece of wood. Preferably, I got wood. Something to uh, place between the oil pan and. A, uh, a, just you know, she's just a two yeah, by four or a piece two by four. Piece two by four will work fine. Or a little piece of plywood. Just something to spread it a little bit. Just whatever fits on there and gets underneath the oil pan. Oil pan on the right side, eh? Yes, sir. Let's get a little pressure off so, so I can get the engine mount out. First car that I've ever seen any work where you had to move an engine mount. Um, it's it's more common on front wheel drive cars because oftentimes the the engine mount is integrated into the front of the engine. Yeah. Which it's the same way. Then this as part of the head. Yep. It's a a structural member. What do you call that? That's uh, a sprung. Uh, what do you uh, when you when you when you uh, camera's over here? Um, what? I just dropped the bolt. Oh, I see. There's another one for you. Come together. It goes with them. Uh, what, do you, what do you call it when you when when the engine is used as a structural member? A structural member. Yeah. Member. Yes, I've seen everything that Beavis and Butt ever did, and it totally affected my life. Okay. And I'd have to say in a good way. That's the engine mount. Now, how easy? So replacing the engine mounts on a on a Civic, or at least that one. That does not look very difficult. That took you I mean, I, it was it was easy for me to move the engine as part of it. Yeah. I lifted up the. I mean. So that's why the jack is under it to now hold the engine yep. where it was not it's being that, held that before. That is no longer there. Okay. Right engine mount. I'm going and to put these little parts back in their little holes. Next, what's next on the list? Uh, now, next for our next trick, uh, remove. Okay, 
Remove the left engine mount, blah, blah, blah. Remove the crankshaft pulley. First, you'll have to ask a friend to put the car in gear and stand on the brake pedal to keep the crankshaft from turning. Then put your wrench on the crankshaft pulley bolt and turn counterclockwise as if you were going to turn the engine. Pull hard. That's a key word there. Uh, since the crankshaft can't turn, your efforts will loosen and remove the bolt that holds the crankshaft pulley. Does that give you enough information? Yep. Should I be the uh, Should I be the friend? No, you shouldn't point? be a friend even. You can just stand there and look pretty. Woo! This is what I'm really good at. <laughs> We're going to. Uh, that's that's why we bring power tools. Impact and we wrench. Make sure that we brought power tools because just in case. Mm -hmm. This is where the uh, part where it said pull hard. You don't have to, what they could actually say is squeeze the trigger lightly. And when I say squeeze, I mean squeeze the trigger, don't pull the trigger. Right? That's the right For size. those of you that uh, understand how firearms operate. Um, what I could do is have my friend turn the tire, though, so I'd have more room in the space. To the right or to the left? To the left. To the left, to the left. Uh, to your, your left or my left? <laughs> oh, you know what? This is not here. Yeah. Yes, sir. More? Oh, that's good. Let me go get my sockets. Removing the crankshaft pulley. If it's stuck on, try gently prying it away from the engine with a pair of big screwdrivers set between the engine and the pulley, one in uh, front of the other behind the crankshaft. Remember, the front of the car is the front. Keywords there. Uh, the trick is to not pry hard. Instead, rock the pulley gently back and forth. Rock the pulley gently and uh, forth with the screwdrivers until it comes off. A small block of steel fits into a slot in the crankshaft and also onto a slot in the pulley. If there's it's there to hold the pulley in place, and it's called the Woodruff Key. Exciting. And it goes in the keyway. It goes in the keyway. I am the key master. Ooh. This is why I didn't need a friend. I am the key master. Are you the gatekeeper? Anyone? Anyone? Oh, I. How do you? I mean, it's just, most, most people, I think that's just like immediate. It's actually been, no, it's just been refreshed. You didn't see the new Ghostbusters? I have not With the original Ghostbusters in it? Yeah. The new Ghostbusters also brought in the Keymaster and the Gatekeeper. They're there. Sigourney Weaver? Sigourney Weaver is in the movie, but she's not the Gatekeeper in this movie. <laughs> well, but... How do you screw that up? Because you have a new Gatekeeper <laughs> and a new... And, and, uh, and, but uh, Paul Rudd is in it too, and like anything with Paul Rudd is pretty good at this Paul point. Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd's the guy that never ages. Um, Paul Rudd is the guy from. Paul Rudd is uh, Ant Man. Okay. Okay. Ant Man is Paul Rudd. He's good. He is good. I like him. Yep. Ghostbusters. Yeah. Um. Another probably. There, is like all over. He's like. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So. There's that. Uh, this is one of the large screwdrivers that the book was talking about. I have several large screwdrivers. Would you like another one of those? No, I just need to know where my flash is. It's right here. I took it away. Actually, it was sitting on. It was sitting over here. Sitting floor on. I know. My fault. You know, that's just that's just me, my obsessive side seeing something that that I felt I needed to fix. And then, and then, what did I do? I didn't help. <laughs> By the wiggling, the wiggling motions of your hand, I can see that that pulley is not fighting very much. A little bit. Maybe just a little bit. Um, yeah, the Woodruff key. Don't lose it. If it doesn't slide out with the pulley, take it out by hand and put it in a safe place. Like what? My pocket? Think, and when you, the key word safe place is there, it's really kind of relative, you know, safe now or safe for like a week. Because that's, those are two different things.
You can see, do you see the whole, the whole engine is wiggling? Yeah. She fighting a little bit? A little bit. Oh, no. I, that is the sound of things coming off. That I can reach on. Oh, oh, there it is. And then that is a little key I'm that's in there. For it. There it is. They said not to lose it. Yeah, I know what they said. <laughs> it's not Am I annoying right. yet? It's whether or not I can get it out of there. This bolt goes with this thing? Yeah. That's a good looking pulley though, isn't it? Kind of looks like a cool mag wheel. Do you have a magnet? Uh huh. You should get it for me. A, a tiny magnet on a tool thing or a very strong magnet? A tiny magnet on a tool thing. Think about magnets, they try to get all the metal things near to come with it. I have several cool magnet things because one of the worst things ever is when you drop something. Yeah. So I have several cool magnet things that make it so that even if you drop something in one of the worst places, you can still get it out because that is like so key. It's so key, it's Woodruff key. <laughs> I told you there'd be reasons to cringe, and that's like one of the, well, I don't know, maybe the first one? Maybe not. If you lose it, find an old steel screwdriver and a grinder, and you can make one. There you go. Or you could drive all the way down to Washougal, Washington, and ask my friend Brian if he has another one. And he'd say, yeah, I do. You just got to go pull it off one of the cars. And then I'd, I'd be, then I'd be like, hey, Brian, can I pay you to take that off of one of the cars instead? Because that'd be a lot better for me. <laughs> I'm good at talking. And I, I am actually capable. But the fact is that not a little. How about, um, you know, like a pick? Uh-huh. Okay. Like an all? I could use like a right angle pick. Ooh, 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 I have something really exciting here for you. Hudson Schomer, how are you doing, my boy? Yeah. Hi. You want to be on the camera? Uh, how about this all? That might work. I don't know. It's, I'm trying to pull something inside. Ladies and gentlemen, the boy with the coolest hoodie right here. Check him out. Spitting image, ain't he? Spit. There he is, Hudson Schomer, also known as Slothbear249. He's also a streamer, by the way. You, you have fun. We will. Um, if you, you, you need anything? No. You good? Okay, we're taking apart the car, and I'm going to be in later for, like, some dinner. Hey. Okay? Oh, no. Totally deeked me out. Totally um, You want me to look for better pokey things like that? Or is that yeah. thing providing some degree of... Because uh, at this point, it's providing a degree of anger. Ah. Um. Do you have any edge on it to grab it? I have like a, like a dentist stool. Yes. Yes. Any kind of pick. That thing is extremely awesome. Do not put it in your mouth though, because it's never actually been a dental tool. It's always been used for car stuff. Is that the one? Um, or other small picking tools. Would lubricating that thing help at all? No. Hey, 
let's move on from this stuff. Okay, for a long handled needle nose, that's again not something that's 90 degrees. Key phrase. What's I... what's next? Next up, um, we have very small Allen wrenches that might help with that. No, I'm fine. Uh, okay, uh, let's see here. Remove the lower belt cover. Remove the three to five bolts that hold on to uh, hold on the lower belt cover with a ten millimeter wrench and pull off this plastic cover. Also, take off the rubber engine mount grommet and the grommets from the adjusters. Okay. There's pictures as well. I see most of them. I need ten millimeter. Yeah. 10 millimeter wrench or socket socket please okay that was the uh the uh kind of oversized this was the front corner there okay. nine and ten Mm -hmm. I'm excited if it's, if it's actually holding anything or if it's just a. It's for the bracket, you know what I mean? Uh huh. And that was actually a pure acknowledgement there. I don't actually know what you mean. No, I'm, I'm not looking at what you're looking at. True. But. Sometimes just that positive reinforcement. That's of, right. Yes, we'll sometimes get things done better than. Sorry, no, I don't really know what you mean. Could you spend five minutes explaining it to me? But, but also, you know what I mean is poor language, and we've had this discussion as well. Yeah, it, it, there's a big difference between do you know what I mean as a serious question and just filler language that well, people I'm, will sometimes right. use. And I'm saying it as a piece of. The content we're working on. Yep. And I asking you, I think you know what I mean. Yeah, and I was, and I kind of just blew that off and was like, yes, because I, I kind of knew what he meant because he was working on something that he was talking about, and I was listening, but I couldn't put it in. I, I should have said, well, I, I know what you mean, but I don't have it in the exact context that you might be expressing it. There you go. Because I couldn't see what he was doing. But... That's really more of a communication issue in general, and since he didn't ask for further affirmation, I figured that was enough. To, when you watch this channel and we do car stuff, I'm going to way over-explain things that I have very little understanding about, and Nas is going to actually make progress that will be impressive, that you'll be like, wow, they're actually getting work done. It's kind of like, did you ever watch, uh, you know, um, and I love this show, uh, Wheeler Dealers, yeah. right? Mike, Mike's a pretty uh, charming dude, and he buys cool cars, but he's obviously not really handy behind the wrench because he just kind of stops in and says, "Hey, is my car done yet?" So, which one do you like? Who, who did you like better? Did you like Ant or did you like? Uh... So, Ant Ant said was his last house, right? Ed, well, Ed, oh, Ed. Ed, you liked Ed China better. Yeah, I, I stopped so watching was, after they didn't. So have it. so was Ed. Then was Ant. Now it's actually a new guy again, I think. Huh. Uh, <laughs> That says a lot about Mike. Yeah. And, 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 and does some really cool stuff, too. Ant uh, just did a bit with, um, oh, there's a car. There's a car. One of the girls used to be on, um, remember All Girls Garage? Uh, I've, I've met those those girls. but Okay, so Chrissy Lee. Uh-huh. So Chrissy Lee and Ant Anstead did a really cool uh, thing where they fixed up cars for celebrities' friends and stuff. Okay. And, and they built some cars for a, a, a pretty cool show. But yeah, I like that dance. And yeah, uh, they actually just relaunched a, a UK brand car. Um, so there was a guy. Who was the guy that did the the original minis? 
did a big custom on them. Um, Radford. Okay. So Radford did custom minis in the old days. Okay. Um, Aunt Danstead and a bunch of other people started Radford up again. And that's where the the 62, the Lotus 62 comes from. Okay. Have you seen the Lotus 62? Uh, no. You should look at the Lotus 62. Mm. I do have a device in my pocket that makes seeing things really, an really immediate easy. instant gratification process. Provided you can type it. That's a good typer. So they went to Lotus. Oh, yeah. Um, they went to Lotus. They made a deal with Lotus. And uh, that's an Esprit chassis under there. Wow. It's an Esprit chassis that's extended by like four inches. Wow. Um, it's a very, very capable car. They're doing a lot of nice things with them. Huh. When I, was, when I was much younger, and I've mentioned this on other streams I've done before, uh, I, I used to say Lotus Esprit because I was I was always a car person, and there was, but there was really nobody else around to correct me. There was nobody else that had any more knowledge about cars than I did. So and I thought, say Esprit? So I, so, but I, I was well into my 20s. By the time I learned that it was a spree, because in, when I was in my twenties, there was a brand, a clothing brand, called a spree. Do you remember that? Do you I remember do. the eighties? I got some grease in my eye. Can I get a oh. towel or something? Uh, one minute. That'll work fine. One minute. So yeah, but so when there was the a spree brand, I realized they were spelled the same way, and uh, and, and that was when I. I Finally decided to say Lotus Esprit rather than Lotus Esprit. But doesn't Esprit sound cool? No. No. That's no. Just, that's, just, that's, that's a you thing, John. It sounds, it sounds like what a 12-year-old would say. That's a you thing, John. Yeah, so I... Okay, still there's still another cool. one down there I gotta get. We want this little, this little... This is part of that cover? Yes. I'm just trying to find... The last couple bolts here. So yeah, that's uh, you know the things we do. I was always able to pronounce Volkswagen bus though somehow. <laughs> maybe that was because I had more experience with them, or maybe it's because it's actually only three letters. Um, but never willing to admit when I'm wrong, or uh, always willing to admit when I'm wrong. Uh, that's that is that is one of my few strengths. Let's take a look at chat. Yeah, you can handle that. I'm still trying to figure this. Hey, Dwayne said how to uh, uh, bug something. Uh, Mark Lee, what's up, man? How's it going? Um, <laughs> Dwayne, it's, that is not part of the program. Um, and it's our dungeon. What's up? 80s, remember? 90s, not so much. I'm with you on that. Uh, Finding a Grand Prix is one. Uh, one of, yeah, Grand Tricks. Is that what they say? Or what? Uh, because that, that, if you really want to sound stupid, you could say that. Uh, but I'll, although it's kind of a hard measure because aspirate probably sounds pretty stupid, except to me. Ah. That one in a peculiar place. It is. The, I'm trying to see it and get to it, and it's just a little bit of a challenge. Now this is all about overcoming challenges, though. You know? That to, to have this show right now where we have, what, what we're doing right now, there was some significant overcoming of challenges. Uh, and he nailed it! Absolutely. We actually did that with just one camera. It's working well, I think. Yep. Starts, uh, sometimes they say, start small and work your way up. Yeah. Um, and, and really, I think the, the one camera, this is, this is perfect anyways. It is. Pretty, pretty good shot. But... Uh, for, just for your reference, going forward, we might have different camera shots depending on uh, what shows off the the work that's being done uh, best. Um, okay. Um, okay. Whatever size that is, get your wrench out. So it's, if they want to already have it. I believe that is a 10 millimeter. Okay. Let's see if I can get a 10 millimeter wrench. Maybe it's just it's in a really tight spot. Huh. You do. You know what they say about, well... Uh, big hands and big shoes, big gloves, big feet. Or whatever. <laughs> big, big, 
big hands and big feet and big shoes and big boots. <laughs> exactly. That's all they say. That's all they say. They don't say anything else about it. <laughs> they just laugh uh, somewhat maniacally in the background. Hey, the pandemic with Bruce. Ah, there it is. Yeah, and what a great car to start with here. Uh, pandemic with Bruce, I love your comment. Nice classic Civic, man. Exactly. Oh. Is it coming or it's, it's not? Let's see this one right here. Uh, no. No, come over. You have to come over my shoulder here. See it in there behind the pump pulley? That's nasty. That might have a long So from handles. the bottom, the problem is, I get almost to it. A longer handle 10 help? Maybe. Or one of those offset ones? Maybe. Let me see if I have such things. Yeah, thank you, though. It really is a really nice Civic. And it's unfortunate. Well, it's really not unfortunate because I would have changed out the timing belt before it broke. We would have still had to change the timing belt out. Yeah. Um, and th thankfully, nothing bad happened in the process of not changing out the timing belt before it broke. Um, I imagine a shorter one is not going to be no, helped. Not at all. Um, is there an equivalent to a 10 in... <laughs> Sometimes I think I have more things than I do. So the metric and SAE offset. Not to there. I'll pick one on the ground. Three eighths is probably about... The... Yeah, I can try. Let's see if I can... Well, we're doing this, so I know that three eighths offset is going to be. I can deal with those. These are covers, cover bolts right here. Okay. These are tools. Bring tools over so I don't. That might work. I'll try it. That is, that is a, you should really see people, you should see that where the spot where that nut is. It's actually quite nasty. I would be expecting a, a note here in the, in the, in the manual to say something special about that one. Just remove three to five bolts that hold on the lower belt cover with 10 millimeter wrench and pull off this plastic cover. That I do not believe enough words have been used to express how difficult that might actually be. Um, let's see here. Uh, remove the five bolts. Grab me the grab me a ten millimeter quarter inch and a quarter inch wrench. Let me see if I can do that. Okay. Are we ten millimeter? So you have the uh, the small uh, the quarter inch driver already. I do. Okay. Um, but I may. Oh, here it is. I see. Okay. Here I have the uh, this the ratchet, and I'm, unfortunately, I don't know if I have a 10 millimeter quarter inch socket. Oh, let me see what I can do here. Uh, let me see what I can put together. 30 here. seconds might be close because the what that would normally be there, but that's an oversized one. I've had this for a long time, so of course, if there's going to be something missing, right, it's going to be the 10 millimeter, right, right. Feel me? Do you understand? Can you understand what I'm saying? Can you understand what I'm saying, man? Yep. That's that's the thing. That's one of the things. The 10 millimeter wrench. You know, you're never going to make it through any sort of project without encountering some sort of 10 millimeter problem. I also have uh, miscellaneous things hidden away in my magic toolbox of joy over here. Larger. 
This is it's not in there, I don't know. Stop. So we'll put that back in there. So yeah, this is the millimeter we're missing on that one. That shoot needed in the past. What's happening? Now, now I'm experiencing lack of joy. Frustration. Something stopping the drawer moving. I've got myself some more room. Excellent. I jacked up the engine. That's going to help. Uh huh. This is probably the closest thing to. Um, the dip, most difficult part of the process thus far. Thus far, yes. It's RZ for everyone, let's be honest. <laughs> it gets more difficult as it goes. <laughs> I was going to say it gets harder the longer you work with it. But then you decide that wouldn't be E for everyone. To right. only, stop. Only, it, only in the con certain context <laughs> um, that I was not even going to bring up. <laughs> but then I just couldn't resist because 13-year-old. I can, I can just blame my inner 13-year-old all there the time. Except for why the drawer will not open or close anymore. Oh. Oh, 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 he won. He really wants to fight. He really. You know what? No way. Yes, we've got this thing totally locked up entirely now, and you can't get in or out or anything. That's a problem. Oh! See if I can get the, uh, the ten see. millimeter ratchet you had on the larger yes. ratchet with the extension. This one, this combination of things. I also have like a swivel head uh, ratchet, a better angle. This is the twelve millimeter. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, There is the 10. The 10 the thin spot with the 12 you, There we go with that. So are you following along here? Do you realize where we're at, what we're doing? Anyone? Anyone? Just to re, if, if you've joined us later here in the show, this is a 1978 Honda Civic. Uh, the timing belt tragically broke. Uh, just a little while ago, just two weeks ago. And so what we, we verified earlier that the timing belt was broke. Broken. Broked, however you'd like to put it, in a better or worse use of the English language. Uh, this is a broken timing belt. And you may or may not know that the timing belt is a fairly integral part uh, to making the engine work. Um, if you don't have a timing belt, then basically the camshaft cannot spin at the proper, well, at all, in fact, uh, which makes the valves move. And so if you don't have the valves moving, you essentially have no compression. And without compression, you don't have an air pump. And if you don't have an air pump, that means you don't have power. And if you don't have power, that means car don't work, to put it simply. Is that a good, uh, good, enough. So, good enough? So so there's that. Um Otherwise, this is a really nice example of a 1978 Honda Civic um, that has some sort of weird other 
uh, head side on it. I can't imagine that this would have had it's, an uh, engine yeah, replacement or a head replacement. It's yeah, I don't know. It's weird. It it could also very likely be that uh, the the manual itself has just made a mistake. And that's entirely possible. Uh, I, I would say that I would just bring it to your attention. Yeah, I think it's very interesting, um, which is why I bring it up again because I think it's a, a very interesting point of information, and I think it's unlikely that a Honda would have its engine replaced before 115,000 miles with an engine from an earlier model, right? Because uh, that what it was saying is that this is an engine from a 75, uh, which is which just makes no sense to me. Oh, but I can't get to those ones easily. Darn it. <laughs> there, herein lies the challenge. It's not an idea, though, right? Uh, to what take it off that? Just move the hood, so we don't have to worry about the hood sticking here. Oh, is the hood These two bolts. Well, it's you know, it's it's the constant this that I'm worried about. Ah. Me bumping into it constantly. Okay. Now, if it's a matter of smaller hands. I do have these delicate model like hands that let's see can yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. delicate manly <laughs> this is this is why not and you know I don't know is the army something that you're happy to talk about or not yeah, yeah. Um, this is why Nas was in the army and I wasn't um, I was I was in the army because I was a bad kid and needed to do something other than stay in the area I was in. Yeah. My friends didn't, and some of them, uh, I mean, they're still doing okay, but they had way more fun than they should have after I left. Now, I'm, I am the child of two Marines. My yeah. parents were Marines, met in the Marine Corps, and I, I became a part of it. And my dad had me set up to go to military school if I wanted to. I met the general who was, or colonel, or whatever he was. Uh, what's the difference? No, I'm just kidding. Um, I met the colonel who was in charge of the school and uh, had a meeting with them, and, and uh, I was like, thank you very much, but God, no way! Uh, because I was kind of an anti-authority. My father was the mayor, my father was a policeman, my father was a Marine. So I had already kind of been through military school to a certain degree. He's a very awesome person. But um, I did not need any more authority in my life, actually. And so I was like, thank you, but no. Um, but there is a part of me that does to a certain degree regret passing up an opportunity uh, to surf and to travel and to have that uh, training and uh, camaraderie and all those things that uh, you get from being in the service. Um, so, eh, just a side topic, interestingly enough. Thank you to all the rest of you who may or may not have served out there uh, because it takes, you know, it was it easy? No. Okay, see? I was I was I was going to just kind of say it's not easy, but then I think it's better that if uh, you know for some reason you're going to speak from experience. Uh, next, I know, just can I get a whoa? Whoa! Uh, don't be funny. You to. Oh my God! There it is. That's the thing that's been fighting the whole time. And this is a little gasket that fits in there. Yep. And here's another one. There's that little piece there. Yep. And here's another one. But we're probably going to have to grab some of these if we can find them. Because these are all the rubber gaskets that go okay. in that tiny board. Yes, you are. You know how awesome you are, Oz? Extremely awesome. And look what else. There's a reason I stepped away from my frustration earlier. That reasoning would be the third. The third one of those. Oh, that was uh, somewhat lost. Oh, there's the key. The Woodruff key. The one that I was trying to. Fish out. Yes. yes. I walked away from it once the cover came off. It fell out. Excellent. So stuck in the bottom of the cover. That's smart thinking. That's smart thinking. So sometimes you just need to walk away. And and that oh that is so true. So many times I've worked on things. Wow. And, and I basically just work myself. Okay, into why don't you come here and see this too? So see this. That's your motor mount bracket. Yeah. Was it hand, it was hand tight? Here's one bolt. I have not put a socket on this yet. The other one's a little harder to get because it's recessed, but yeah, it's in this exact, it's loosening off that, uh, yeah. Huh. 
So that's interesting. So the motor mount's been loose at a minimum, right? Uh, dead. I mean, obviously, I, I, there's... I mean, so, so, so here's my thing. They don't come loose from the factory. They wouldn't have loosened up from the factory. Even after all these years, it, it, that bolt wouldn't have been loose from the factory. Yeah. So that means that bolt... Somebody fooled with it. Somebody fooled with it at one point. Somebody's been on this end of the engine at one point. Well, so this car was is, is the product of two cars. Okay. Um, one was a parts car, and this was the car with a good body. And the parts I, I, car was 75. I may, it may be. It may be. That the and that's why, that's why the engine mount would be loose, too, because they replaced the engine. Uh, this, this is easily confirmable because I, I, I have I have words often with my friend Guy, who I bought right. the car from, um, and I could probably ask questions like, "Did you guys actually pull the engine out of another car and put it in here?" I think so. Um, I, I I feel like there's a pretty strong chance there. Some things are starting to make more sense. Yeah. Uh, this bolt that you handed me should this go with the time yes, belt lower time belt cover? Time bolt covers. Bolts, the ones I just put over there. Okay. So interesting things are being found. Yeah. Well, and that's. This one did not need to come out, so I'm going to tighten that one back in there. It may need to come out later, but then I'll worry about it later. I'm going to pull the last one for that engine mount off, though, because it's just flipping around in there. So I need uh, probably a 15. Like socket? 15 or 14 socket. Yes, it is. Here's the 14 if you'd like to try that first. Yeah. It is a 14. We're good. Okay. It's there. Yeah, this was this was not this was not machine or tool tight either. Huh. You saw, I mean, it was spinning around. Yeah. And that was before I ever touched it with the tool, so. Interesting. Very interesting. the pandemic with Bruce. We have ourselves another subscriber on YouTube. Woo! Thank you, Bruce. It's good to know. It's nice. It's nice. Um, this one's not that way, but pretty soon we're going to start doing some more raw recording and PCs together into videos for YouTube, too. <laughs> Dude, I love you. Love your gamer tag. Dude's gamer tag is remember wife's birthday and then has her birthday in his gamer tag. So that every time he's on Twitch or playing games, He's reminded of the wife's birthday. That's smart. That's amazingly smart. That's poignant, dude. Um, and, and, hey, who's this buddy? Who's this buddy? How you doing? Um, Kaid's here. Kaid's here. Woo! Can you get a hua? Uh, no, actually, I'm sorry. I'm not sure. I'm the hua. If my dad didn't survive the 9 11 war, I wouldn't be here. Kaid says, nice. Where'd this one go, buddy? Uh, Where's the other bolt? Uh, this part right here. Oh, yep. Uh, there we go. Let's see here. Civic has no hood. It's a hot rod Civic. Um, okay. I might need a little explanation on that one, Penn and Bruce. Um, yeah, but if Johnny could have worked in the motor pool and had more vehicle knowledge, that's true. That's true. The thing is, I never would have survived the whole like discipline thing. I just, I never would, I never would have. I would have rebelled against it, and I would have gotten in trouble. And I would have probably like been like, screw you guys, I'm going home. And they would have been like, no, you're not. And I'm like, yeah, I am. And I probably would have, it wouldn't have gone well for me. Uh, and I would not have been proud of those choices later in life. Uh, but that's kind of who I was back then. Um, hey, the, how's the Alpha? The, the first, oh, you were here for the Alpha. Okay. Um, so the Alpha, I sold it. I sold it. I realized that I had seven cars already. And that, that was quite a few. And that the Alpha was going to be pretty much an all-consuming project for both resources and time. Um, and I, that car came to me, but it wasn't something I really sought out. I already have a convertible. And although I'm a member of the board of the Northwest Alpha Romeo Club, I, 
I don't have all four rams yet. At some point, I will. Um, but I sold it. I sold it to somebody who had full intention of going all the distance with it, and I made a very nice profit on it. And uh, that money is now being put into getting my other cars uh, up to the next level. So it was a repurposing. But I did save the car. Um, Dwayne, it just hit me. If they had backed into the garage, the tool then would have been on the same side of the car as working on it. Taking a bunch of travel time. Yes, sir. He is correct. I didn't see but we wouldn't have to back it into the studio area, and we don't have room for that, so. Yeah, uh, Foresight's 2020, right? Or something well, like that. Well, ultimately, like I said, it would have been back in the studio area, and and that's, we're, we're fine. It's, it's really perfect as it is, even though there is more. Have you seen there. my thick self? I could use the steps. Girth. Girthy. I am a man of girth. I am a ballast boy. <laughs> uh, oh, my God, Fred! Alpha Male 64S, what's up? Oh, um, yeah. Uh, here, here's. If anybody ever asks you, I have a spare V12 Ferrari engine on a stand. Do you want to swap it in the Civic? The answer is always yes. Always. Always. Even if it takes a lot of money to get the V12 in there. A V12 swap Civic, nobody, nobody's done that. And people have done almost everything. It's just full frame, cut the floor out of this and set it on top. So, Fred, we're going to stop doing this work now and start just pulling the motor yep. out. If you just bring that over, yep. then we'll hook it. We'll just... Uh, well, what we're going to do is we're just going to, like I said, we're just going to cut the floor completely out of this. We're going to lift the whole the whole body, and we're going to set it on a new chassis with the V12 in it. Problem solved. Done. Done. Done and done. Yeah. Yeah. The answer is yes. Always. Uh, Always yes. Let's see here. Uh, thank you for following Hostile Eraser 93. You rock. Thank you. V12 hanging out the front. And uh, what what is the rear then? Uh, big giant exhaust in the rear? With no, because if we're using a Ferrari, then the the transmission and diff oh, and everything is out back. But then where is the exhaust going out the front? Oh, just stick it right through the hood. Oh, that, that, again, something that hasn't been done. Well, this yeah, is the challenge. So, so DDE actually took a... Took a the FF. Okay. They took it to Adam Co or Aaron Kaufman from Gas Monkey Garage. Used to be from Gas Monkey Garage. Really excellent beard guy. Uh huh. Um, he twin turbo. It. it it's had its problems, but they're getting there, and they plan on about a thousand horsepower out of a FF with twin turbo sticking out of the hood. See, we're planning for more like around 60 horsepower with the Civic. So, it's a little bit more of a humble goal, but go right ahead. Go right ahead. Where is it at? Oh, uh, so go. Um, All right, so we left you alone for a moment. It's okay. It's okay. We're back. Okay. Uh, Nas is taking a quick break. Uh, Mid-engine Civic, we know it's possible. Hey, Fred, the first thing is the delivery of the motor. <laughs> the first thing, you deliver the motor, and then decisions can be made. For sure. And you, you want to bring the stand, too. That'd be great, because... Just even if it was just here sitting next to the Civic, it'd be cooler. I'm just saying, you know. Um, but yeah, um, apparently Nas and I had a similar post-service uh, physical uh, fitness regimens. Run only if being chased by a bear. Uh, you'll have to talk to Nas about that, but you may be, you may or may not be right. You fixed it while I was gone. Sweet. Let me just hop in. Let's go for a ride now. That's why we have you guys in chat because, you know. I don't want to do it. Nas has been making great progress, but if we could just like hang out and watch chat fix it, now that would be a cool show, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Yes. So let me talk about what's uh, going forward here. So the, the goal of the day is to get the head removed. 
and I don't know if we'll make it there or not. We're going to spend, um, between, you know, until, until Nas decides that he wants to go home because he doesn't have to do any of this. Um, and then the, the, the next step will be, you know, the head will be out. It'll be going to a machine shop to get, uh, inspected, uh, milled and ported and polished. And during that time, while that's getting done, I will be locating a new timing belt, a new alternator belt, a new air pump belt, uh, new hoses, and uh, whatever else we kind of need to make sure that when we put it all back together, that it's even better than it was before. Uh, the carburetor needs to be rebuilt. I've got a carb rebuild kit. Uh, we've got a new fuel filter. That's going to help uh, itself by, by itself. Um, and then when the head comes back, a uh, head gasket set. I'm going to need a head gasket set. When, it come, when the head comes back, then we'll put it all back together. And then when it fires up and runs, it's going to be even better than it was before. So that's project one, uh, which we may kind of leave and come back to, depending on uh, how, you know, how long the head is at the machine shop, so on and so forth, right? Uh, but I have another project that also needs to be worked on, and that is my 1971 Squareback. Uh, that's a runner driver right now, but the engine is tired. And one of my friends, Jerry, who is who, he's retiring this year. He's been running a place called Northwest Connecting Rod for the better part of his life. He's the Northwest Volkswagen guru. And there's a lot, there's been a lot around, but Jerry's the one. He's, he builds the best motors. And he's really cool, older guy. He's, he's retiring this year and he's moving to Alaska and he's selling his shop and he's not going to mess around anymore. He's just going to go fishing for the rest of his life. And good for him. But even though I wasn't sure what I was doing with the Squareback, I need to take this opportunity to be able to uh, get to work with Jerry one more time to get him to rebuild a motor so I know the motor I've got in that square back is basically going to last me a lifetime. And so pulling that motor out of the square back is kind of the next other car project that I'll be working on. Um, Wednesdays might here be the day. I think that's what we're going to work with. And uh, if you know anything about VWs, it's really not that hard to pull the motor out. Um, with the square back, the most difficult thing is just, can you jack the car up high enough to get the motor out of it? There's four bolts that hold a Volkswagen motor in place. Then you got your your, uh, your fuel kit, your accelerator cable, and a couple of wires that are connected from the body to the coil. Uh, you disconnect those. You take out the four bolts, which I've done several times, and you give the good the motor a good yank, and it slides right off the uh, the shaft and shaft, and then you uh, and then you lower it down, and then you jack the car up uh, over it, and then you slide the motor out. So I bought another jack. I've got a big uh, a brace jack that's a uh, twenty wheezes up twenty five inches. Uh, so that should be enough. 25 inches, something like that. Um, and we've got blocks and things to use on top of that. So that's the other project uh, that's coming up. Uh, aside from that, also, uh, my 1978 Porsche 911 SC is getting its motor rebuilt. And that's going to happen at a, at a shop uh, that's not here, but we're going to make a video out of that. that. No, we're not doing that. We're, we're <laughs> not rebuilding the uh, Porsche motor. That's going to be done by my friends over at uh, uh, European Car Authority. And, but we will get some video of that and hopefully make a cool time-lapse video of, of how that, that motor build goes. So this is the crunch time. There's lots of stuff going on here. <laughs> now, where were you exactly? Now that my brain's back. Mm -hmm. um, let's see here. Uh, yeah, where were you here? You uh, removed the lower belt I'm, cover. I'm working on the Okay, because uh, I'm, I'm looking at here, I'm looking at the lower belt cover that you have removed. Yep. Um, remove the washer. Remove the big washer from the end of the crankshaft. Okay, that is right here. which way it goes so that it goes in the correct way, which were, I also did. You were reading stuff secretly behind my back. Uh, loosen the timing belt adjuster and pivot bolts. That's what I'm working on right now. Okay, step 12. Um, wow, the... Then step 13 is remove the remains of the belt and clean up. Yeah, that was step two, I think, wasn't it? It was, because, yeah, it kind of came off by itself because it was all busted up. And then uh, step 14, put on the new timing belt. Is that all? No. Oh. That's it. Oh, it's... We don't even have to pull the head. No, really, honestly. We honestly don't have to. It wants us to set the head back at timing marks, set the bottom at timing marks, and put the new belt on. So we need a new belt, and we need 
a bunch of hoses and random rubber. So despite what I said, I thought we were going to do it. Might we? We know we we're didn't do any damage. We're not it's, pull the head it, off. It, it, it's really it really be useless to pull the head off. Yeah. Um, Especially when we are now to the point we need to be to. Which would also be a perfect ending point for, okay. for a show. I, I think that's a good end right there. We got yeah. to the point where we need to buy parts. and. Uh, See, sometimes I get a vision about what I think is going to happen, and then reality steps in. Oh! No, no. That's it. Those are my two pivot bolts. I need to listen. Reality steps in and says, hey, you know what? You don't really have to do that, which is kind of cool because... While the thought of having a ported and polished head is kind of an exciting thought, the thought of spending a thousand dollars and many more hours to get the little car running again, that's not as exciting. No, it is not. Um, and we are there. We could spend time doing other little things like replacing the hoses and the belts and rebuilding the carburetor and all these other nice little simple things that will show up really nicely on camera. While mm-hmm. if the head is off at a machine we shop, clean up all that stuff while we're down. All the stuff could be totally cleaned up. Yep, exactly. Which will be totally fun. That's I'm I'm really good at cleaning stuff, I, honestly. Um, which means we don't have to mess with the exhaust manifold, no. which is like one of those points where if things can get really ugly. Say remove the tensioner. Uh, it's it's loosen, it. loosen the timing belt adjuster and pivot bolts. If you don't know how, see procedure one. Uh, would you like me to read procedure one timing belt adjustment? Sure, if you want to. Um. Procedure one. Procedure one, timing belt attention adjustment. To make the camshaft easier to turn and to lessen the chance that compression in the cylinders will follow up your adjustment, take out all the spark plugs uh, for how to do that. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, turn the crankshaft, uh, let's see here, then using a 12 millimeter wrench, loosen, but do not remove the timing belt adjuster bolt and the timing belt pivot bolt. Turn the crankshaft counterclockwise at least one quarter turn. Make sure the ignition's off and the gears are in neutral or park. They are loose. We're good. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. They are not removed, but they are I was loose. having so much fun reading, though. I, you can continue reading. <laughs> but I'm just telling you, if, if you come look, the, the tensioner is still spring-loaded and moves. So that's what we need. It pivots on this one. This one's a pivot. And this one's the locking. Okay. And this one's good. So, so quest. So this is. It is a twelve. It doesn't really matter if it's a seventy-five or seventy-eight. It is a twelve. It is twelve hundred cc. And so twelve hundred uh, timing yep. belt. And, and, it, and it literally could be someone put the different pulley on. I doubt that. I, I would guess more that the head has been replaced mm-hmm. or the engine is different. So it well the timing belt would have been replaced previously. That's right. If I mean, it's at some point, it probably... It, in theory, if it was replaced around 60 or 70, it shouldn't have gone now. Uh, but it's, and, it depends and, replace, on... and replacing before that wouldn't have made a whole lot of sense. Okay. 30,000, I know it says check it every 30, but your first 30 is cake. Yeah. Your first 30 is not going to be anything you're going to want to... Re- so, at soonest, it's going to be your second 30. What about water pump? Water pump would probably be about this time as well. It wouldn't have... Um, but it, what I'm trying to think is you don't need, why to, you don't, you don't need to replace the water pump. Or you don't need to pull off that front cover at all to replace the water pump. There's, there's, there's other than a different engine yeah. or the book lighting. being wrong. Yeah. The, other than a different engine or the book being wrong, those are the only two valid. So there's, there's no reason why you would have changed that gear out, no. period. No. Pretty much. Okay, uh, let's see here. It's it's entirely possible. Uh, I'm looking for. I mean, just see. I'm pretty sure that my friend Brian would have them, but I don't really want to drive all the way down to Washougal again. Yeah, actually, Duchess, I I uh, post military. I have this. Um, this is interesting. See, that's my post military there. Ow. So I up until from the time I was 19 until I was. 51, I think. I operated on a slowly decreasing ankle. Okay. Um, chronic osteoarthritis with decreasing joint space, meaning the cartilage was wearing down the more I used it. And eventually just got to the point where we were talking bone on bone. Ouch! So now it has a solid titanium rod that goes to the bottom of my foot mm. all the way up my... All the way up... See? 
hole in the bottom of my foot right there. Okay. The titanium rod that goes through there fixates the bottom of my foot, fixates my ankle. Hmm. My ankle has that much flex in it. Just my, so, Fixed it. so that's part of my running. I don't do a whole lot of running because of that. Because they did fix it. Now it's it, it moves again like it should, but it also uh, it doesn't bend. So here's here's the sad first result, and that it might, might be based on this go making a uh, planning a trip to Washugo sooner than later. Uh, from Honda Parts now, two timing belts found. 1978 Honda timing belt discontinued. Oh, I can go get them parts. I mean, like go to Rock Auto and they're ten bucks too. I mean, every every belt I found for this is right around the ten dollar mark. Oh, so you've you've already seen oh them. I've already looked for belts. Uh, so Rock Auto, let's go to Rock Auto. That's where my friend Ryan used to buy stuff. I uh, I buy a decent amount of Rock Auto. We'll have to make uh make a shopping list and yes, all of the parts. Um, After hand I wipe my way back out of the house too. Nice. This guy. This guy's amazing. I, I I couldn't tell you. Well, I could, and I will actually tell you how impressed I am with this individual. It, it is a fusion that just uh eight so yeah i went about i went give or take 30 some years and then finally was like well okay i just can't what what happened is it got to the point where every time i would use my if i like today today would have meant i was down for the next two days mm. because just the pain and the swelling and from, the, from just moving around just for moving around so now I may be sore when I get home, but when I wake up in the morning, that pain's not there. So I'm, I'm able to function for another day where before, like I said, I was down for two or three days. Okay, timing, timing belt, $7.20. See? Oh, I, can't, I, I can't afford that! $7.20. Um, yeah. So I think what we're going to want to do is we're going to make a shopping list. And we'll hey, Mr. Frog. Right now. Welcome to the channel. Mr. Frog! Um, yeah, so we're going to, all this stuff, I'm going to clean all this stuff, and we're going to make a list of parts stuff. I'm going to order it from Rock Auto. I'm going to get my hands clean so we can actually use the computer and Yep, and uh, and that, I think we call that the show. 2.30-ish to 5.30-ish is three hours. And, uh, yeah, and that's... Uh, progress made so we're not going to pull the head off awesome you know easier is better easier is better uh so we're going to get the time belt we're going to order these parts and when the parts come in uh we'll, we we will put it back together <laughs> well we'll we'll do our best <laughs> yeah um so that's yeah that's cool are we so we're ready to go uh to thanks for not paying attention yeah pretty soon here yep. uh folks thanks for watching if you liked what you saw here there's lots more coming your way uh hit the follow button i if you want to subscribe that's awesome but i really don't need the subscribers as much as i would love to have you follow uh we're doing cool stuff and you're working on cars hanging out in the garage with my dumb jokes and Nas's uh very good knowledge and patience and ability um and i will maybe work on some stuff too um but Till next time, which will likely be uh, next Wednesday in at least some format. Same time, same place. Oh, sure, next uh, Wednesday, because we have the early show. And uh, then that'll lead into, I'll be up here for that, I'm assuming, maybe. Yeah, if you want to be. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, yep. then sometime in the afternoon, let's say around 3 o'clock, is when the John and Wanna Garage actual work progress stuff happens. So until then, I'm John and Wanna. I'm Seriously Dawes. And you're not. And we are out of here. Thanks for watching.